Okay, it's uh, 12.35, October 9th, 2020, and we're going to start our workshop. Uh, this is basically a discussion regarding the new town office, floor plan, and such. So, and we've all kind of been working on this on our own. So, and we have a guest today, uh, Nick. <coughs> Nick, wait, and Nick, what, what do you, can you describe what you do so everybody will know? Uh, mostly it's uh, architectural design, um, mostly residential, some commercial, and in this case municipal. Um, mostly conceptual design when we get into commercial and municipal. Um, but uh, 3D, you know, floor plans and then 3D visualization, so. Yeah, well, you've got, we've got some samples of of your work, and we, I've, we've all seen some video that you have posted, and uh, once we can arrive at a kind of a final product, I think I think your service is going to be really helpful. So. Um, where do you guys want to start? So um, today, so um, Bridie and I met with Nick uh, last week, or two weeks ago, or uh, last Monday. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and we took Nick out to the um, Veterans Memorial Park, Sangerville Veteran Veterans Memorial Park, and we hiked the whole shoreline um, with uh, an eye toward possible um, building sites. Um, and we Brady and I took Nick first around this office, uh, the, this off, this town um, hall, to show him what they're using and what we need and what we don't need, and um, and then out there to look at the the locations um, and with an eye towards putting it perhaps in on a in a video, putting it so that it can be visualized as though it was Google Maps and sitting right in those locations. So in front of us we have um, some renderings that Nick has already done specifically for the two different locations that we identified at um, the Veterans Memorial Park. Um, and so I think today what we're going to do is just go over them and um, see, it, tweak things that we see that we want to um, see in our final drawings. Um, so the, the first thing that I see um, and that I um, is, and I know that we express daylight basement um, and you know is is decking and I realize that you can't get to this door without decking um, but again you know as far as shoveling snow and that type of thing is there any that's the that's the first thing. I mean, looking at the exterior, we'll start at the exterior. Um, so, what input do you have as far as that's concerned? Well, my first reaction is to possibly put a roof over that with a, a good sized overhang, so it minimizes what you have for shoveling, if any at all. Um, you know, just based on where the roof, the roof location is, if it's got a good overhang, I think that will. I think you'll find that will prevent a lot of that. Um, snow buildup. Now, is this roof? It's hard to it, that. Does that project over the the decking or no? No, just over the just over the walls. Okay. Right. What is the overhang of this roof? I believe it's two feet. There is a sheet oh, there that will. So, oh, does it say? Yeah, I tried to get a little bit more of a overhang. I'm um, kind of that that will leave possibility for um, comfortable, maybe possibly uh, putting lighting in there. Mm. Um, just for. You know, I think it's a good idea with this sort of building to, to keep the overhang a little bit more than normal. Is that in, on this sheet? No, nope. uh, keep going. See oh. Should be oh, in the roof, roof elevation? Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. But I was kind of, my thought was to better utilize the landscape so that when you actually come to the upper level, it's ground level. Mm -hmm. So you just, you know what I mean? You just naturally come into the top and then the same way at the bottom. Because there is pretty good sloping in there already in those hills. Yeah. If we could kind of do that, and then we really, we wouldn't need it having anything of a deck, is what I was hoping if we could do it that way rather than two couples. For me, it's a couple different scenarios. One, it's the safety end of it. Um, that we could come straight in rather than 
than worrying about any type of shoveling or whatever, but it's just more the added cost of the deck the, and maintenance going forward and things like that. Right, and this this was taken strictly from, um, you, you know, my best assessment of what the no, grade was there yeah, based on yeah, the information that I could yeah, find yeah. beyond having an actual survey there. So, I mean, as far sure. as grading goes, that can be adjusted. I mean, obviously, like you see, that um, that ramp is pretty long, mm -hmm. and, and part of that is because of, you know, I set it out there to kind of um, stimulate the question, you know, why is that ramp small? Okay, well, it's great. So we can either breed, bring the grade up and shorten all that. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, so, it, you know, you try not to make assumptions, but you want to have that discussion, yep. um, you know, as far as how that should go. Um, I mean, I think if you put a retaining wall in there and brought the grade out level, That's exactly what I I'm mean, thinking. at that point, maybe look at only having it like a, in that location that faces the water, you'd only have, you know, maybe, you know, as far as a, purely speaking, a deck there, and maybe have a smaller ramp on that gable end. I came from a town uh, in Litchfield, and they built a, a modern town office after years in their old school. Um, and, but the lay of the land was similar. Uh, uh, so this, uh, this side of the drawing is, is 23 side, this is the road side. Uh, and so you would, you would you'd drive in, you'd be on grade, maybe a, a, maybe a contour like an asphalt ramp that would you know, make it accessible to anyone. And what you've described is exactly what they did. There was essentially, this was all parking, there was a retaining wall here, and then you would drive around back and, and the community room was downstairs. And they had they voted down there, and right. big meetings were down there. But there was there would be no back deck because there's no need for a back door. Um, every all everybody would enter on the for the fir first floor in the front of the building, and for the second floor or the daylight basement portion, you'd have a door out back. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we could do something similar. That you're going to eliminate all kinds of snow removal and maintenance and that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of how I mm -hmm. envisioned it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think any any deck. I mean, you know, I understand the roof overhang, but her. it's what Benton has done the same thing. They're uh, <coughs> they don't have any ramps because they they landscaped the ramp and they mm -hmm. asphalted that right up. So you know, it's all wheelchair accessible, to you. and you can. Snow blow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's apartment is similar. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you go to the top here at the top, or you go to the bottom here at the bottom. Right. So and we would have like no. Like Sonic Hall in Guilford, that's how they developed done that building. You can go to the top and go in through that door, or you drive in the main parking lot, which is the bottom. Oh, oh, oh over here, down yeah. there. Oh. So you end up with no ramps. Right. Right. To speak, no. Right. You know. Right. Right. Um, and I think I think. So that's definitely something, and and so then you contour the land, right, to right. make it so. Yep. Well, on the other side too, about the deck, even for the downstairs part, when you start talking about snow removal and things like that, when you do have the deck and you do have the post, you're adding yep. cost as far as for cleanup and everything else, because it, it ends up being more manual than machine. Right? Uh -huh. You can't just drive up and back drag stuff out of there. Right. Well, and the thought is too, if that needs to be there. Maybe we could look at some sort of configuration where we don't have any posts under the deck, where it's a cantilevered floor system. Um, that you know, I don't know if that's a real possibility. Um, if it's really desired to have something on that, but we could also adjust the layout so maybe all the entrances. Um, there's no entrances on the top side facing the water. Correct. Correct. I, I would expect that there wouldn't be. Okay. Uh, you'd, have, you'd have windows, so be, you know, get nice lighting. Yep. Um, but no, I and I don't anticipate having. Any required decking, um, because you'd enter from the front, you'd 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 bring your land up, so you'd have a, a retaining wall, and you'd you'd be on the ground level in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, both sides are accessible by vehicles. Correct, correct. And uh, the really the area where you need the most parking is down back when you for that once or twice a year when you have a town meeting. Right. Um, so that, I think we're all kind of seeing yeah. that in a similar way. Yeah. It's very low maintenance. We don't have a public works department, so our snow removal is all contracted. So ideally, a guy's, you know, he, he's got a, a V-plow or whatever, and he's right. going right by the front door, and yeah. everybody can get in in the morning. and Right, and minimize the yeah. cost of yep. yeah. upkeep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay.
And I do like the idea of, you know, the bigger the overhangs, the better. Just get, getting the snow away from the from building. The building. Mm -hmm. Well, not Big snow, hat. water, tall boots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely. Um, uh, yeah. I agree. The, the deck, if possible, has got to go. So, and in this rendering, I, I one of those, may, they may be three double doors, those may not be windows, but I, I'm imagining a, a good-sized door, so uh, again, it's wheelchair accessible, and, mm -hmm. and take advantage of the lighting back there and views of yes. the ball field. 100%. Uh, what do you mean? Um, the basement? Yeah. Okay. And, Here, do you have a set of these? You don't have a set. <laughs> You did not come from here. <laughs> okay, I have some extras. Oh, we, thanks, so, Mike, for doing this, by the way. Oh, no, Lorna did the oh, big oh. packets, and oh. I just printed myself a couple, oh. <laughs> which I don't need now because Lorna did oh, this that for was me. Nice. So in looking at this downstairs layout, what I'm seeing now is, um, now I put sliding patio doors in here, but that's probably not a, actually a good option mm -mm. because when those doors are all the way open, most of the time you're not even going to get 36 inches. Of mm. So if there needs to be a door there, I mean, it could be a single door or maybe a French door with one, one operating unit to let in light. And those other two would actually, in, in my mind, I would think you'd want those fixed. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Because it would let a lot of light in, but they don't need to really operate. Right. And it's a good value versus getting a huge window. Okay. So. Okay. Now, when you say value, as far as you mean that they would be operating doors or not operating doors? Not operating doors, but in terms of the the size of what you're paying for, like with a uh, like a patio door. I mean, generally speaking, like a French door versus a patio door. French door. I mean, I, you may know this, but you can end up paying easily twice as mm. much for a French door as, mm. as opposed to a patio door, mm. um, and you don't get the access. Um, but when you compare, like, say, a patio door against a window, um, a lot of times you're going to get close to the same uh, cost, and there's going to be, you know, where you're dealing with more of a fixed unit, you're going to get more light mm -hmm. um, than the window, and the window will probably cost more for mm -hmm. a smaller size because, I mean, unless they're fixed. Um, right. Generally speaking. Right. I mean, and the only thing about that with having all that glass down there is that then let's say you were putting something against what? Let's say we've got our voter booth. You know, where where are those going? Yeah, you know wall what I'm spaces saying? sometimes. Right. Right. Very you, important. Yeah, exactly. Because we plan on having some electronics, video, maybe large screen TV, that kind of thing yeah. so that mm -hmm. people can view what we're doing in real time. Uh, or at least if, maybe not out of the gate, but potentially. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is is security. I mean, now, granted, somebody can break a window and climb through a window, but, you know, a big plate glass door is just, it, you know, it, I mean, it, it could be windows up high, so that then, right. especially if we're going to really be, have screens and really have this sort of, you know, quote-unquote high-tech um area downstairs where people can be zooming in for a meeting and things like that. Do we need all that mm -hmm. light down? You know, that yeah, type can, of... Yeah, I think part of, the, part of the thought here was in either location looking this way, you will see water. Mm, uh, which is nice. So then there's kind of that kind of balance between you know, capturing that view and then utilizing wall space. Right. Um, and I think my thought was, in this case, we're looking at this back wall here. Okay, that's right. That's in either for hill. you know library, you know, for mm -hmm. the bookshelves or, mm -hmm. or or something like that. Um, so I mean, all that can change as needed. But I think I would prefer a nice entrance door and then nice large windows and then you know that way they do like this scenario here. You can't have things or shelving units, or it still does give you some wall space, but you still grant. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you got it's sealed up a little better, a lot yep. less water, or you got to worry about that. Yeah. Do you guys think we need? What are you looking for? <laughs> what I, was say, I saw his, he got his calculator out. That this, a, I don't know if that's what you were looking well, for. Well, I was just, um, I was just the library. We roughly are estimating that it's going to require 600 square feet, so I just want to see what's going to be left. <clears throat> I'm wondering, back to the entrances, do we want two doors, perhaps, an entrance and an exit? So yes. that, because not right now, if everybody's coming in, we go in and out of the fire station, everybody kind of, oh, it's yeah. a choke point. Right. But if we're going to build a new building, we ought to have probably a door at one end for going out and yep. a door at the other end for coming in. Yep. Uh, even on voting day, that would be very helpful. Yes. Um, 
So that... Well, that's a very good point. You mean even for downstairs? Uh, sort good, of like particularly entrance, for downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I see... So many square feet do they have now? It, well, I don't know how what we have here, but the downstairs in this diagram is 1680. But I mean, what was the number of the library we were shooting? 600. But this won't be the library. Well, you can, <laughs> this you is the. I, what I started playing with last night because we've got because I was I was already going there. You're just beating me to it. This isn't going to be, if we go with this scenario, this isn't a conference room, this is the library. Well, it, what I'm, what, I was playing with the, with, the, with the floor plan, the upstairs floor plan last night. And we've always essentially said, we have our community room, this room, upstairs, mm -hmm. uh, or it's going to become a library. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure why we need to do it that way. Uh, we can, we can meet in what the community room will be also the town meeting room. We can utilize that space twice a month. It's way bigger than we need, but that takes either both the library and the community room off the first floor. You can make the first floor maybe smaller or, or have more space for whatever mm -hmm. your, your, mm -hmm. your wish list is. But assuming that we, we, we basically separated the selectmen's meetings from the annual meeting. And I'm not sure that that's a very efficient way to do that. So you mean that we, even when we meet, we would meet downstairs? Correct. Correct. That's and, what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you but, are, Well, no, I was just looking <clears throat> simple math. I mean, this is almost 600 feet. Yeah. The library does not need all this space. We need this space for town meeting. Correct. I don't want to give this space to the library and then mm -hmm. we can't have town meeting. Yeah. The whole point of the... Well, and if we the, pull the library, <clears throat> if the library exists... It can coexist with the annual meeting space. Okay. In other words, there's enough room there. Mm -hmm. uh, I that, and that was my question for you. If if I look at a seat over there, how many square feet do I need for each one of those? In my mind, I'm thinking six. But for a t for a chair, you mean? Yeah. yeah. You've got roughly four for the chair and another two feet in front of you. I mean, if you're gonna have six feet for each person, right? So 600 square feet. 100 people, but are they going to be packed in there pretty good? Oh, that's, um, oh, that's there's what, no extra at that. Right, that's what I'm saying. And that's, that's, not, right. that's not spaced out either, at all. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be, it won't be like an aircraft, but it's going to start to feel that way. Well, right. think about it. What you just said would be putting 100 people in this room. Almost, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, doing it by square footage. So, that's, that's kind of how I, it's like, okay, 600, now, in all fairness, it's rare that we ever have a 100-person meeting. But we have far more people than that that live in this town, so we could have one. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I, this is what I thought we were doing. I thought we were going to set this up. This is the library. You mean oh, downstairs or upstairs? Upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. Okay. And this is a space for town meeting, large meetings. We can use it if needed or whatever. If anything ever happened and if the library didn't decide they needed space, then we could use this for a smaller meeting area, conference area, multi-purpose room. No question about it. Right. But I really, and I, you're, as long as the library is in play, that's probably the best way to go about this. Right. Um, but we probably should also have a plan that's based on no library. And if you have no library, that changes everything. All of a sudden, we have all kinds of room with this footprint. Mm -hmm. Way more than we need. Mm -hmm. For the upstairs in terms of the municipal running of the town, and downstairs in terms of a meeting room. Meeting. Yeah, at that point, essentially, you've cut off 20 feet of the, the, the building right. on both levels. And, it's, and that's... I don't think the, you can cut off 20 feet in the basement, not and get for a town meeting. Oh, I think you could if you had no library. Yeah, if you didn't have any library down there... I mean, you have a thousand square yeah, feet? Thinking about a library, period. If you're going to set this room up for a 100-person meeting area, I understand what you did as far as... If you, if you took this square right here, okay, and you just set that right in front of those where you're going to put it, that doesn't give you a whole lot of room left uh, at the yeah. current configuration. If, but if, if basically, if you have a 1,000 square feet, you should have plenty of room for a 100-person meeting. Because yeah. we just figured out the 600 square feet will, will do it if you sit like you're in an aircraft. But at six feet, you're stacking everybody on top of each other. But at 1,000, you don't have to. 
That's my what I'm but saying. But a thousand feet doesn't give you any room for your walkway up the middle. It doesn't give you any room. You, you're going to have a meeting, a space. Maybe it's twelve hundred. Table, hundred percent. That's what maybe I'm it's eleven hundred. It's gonna. But it's not seventeen hundred. What's the footprint of the fire department? That's where we used to meet all the time. But you well, don't have 1,700 here. You'd have to, because there's so much oh. around there, but right. I don't know. How did you get the six, what numbers was used? I just did length and width of the building. It's 20, 28 by 60. Right, but you already lost 10 because you've got to have a mechanical room and you've got I, six stairs. I get, no, I, you're getting smaller, every, everything you add. And, that, and, and we haven't even talked about staircase. I, everybody I talk to, it's like, why would you need a staircase? And then somebody else says, well, you got to have a staircase. So I'm that, with you. <laughs> so, I, I you have, have to have a staircase. That's you right. have to have a staircase from the top to the bottom, don't you? Why? Because what if we start up upstairs and then all of a sudden... Well, you get... let me play devil's advocate. <laughs> what? Every, for the last 10 years, we meet over there in the fire department and their buildings don't even touch each other. True. The municipal office is over here, right? Right. They have to prepare for that meeting. For a week in advance. It seems short sighted. If the, if the, I, no, I, I, I agree though, because I, I understand both you sides of that point. Them. But let's just, <laughs> no, no, I, like I said, I agree. I understand the, the, the rationale because there are a lot of times where um, when we're dealing with houses in the city, sometimes there's just not enough room for a staircase inside the building. So a lot of times there's only like a bulkhead entrance. But that does put you at a disadvantage because if you've got people upstairs and they need to be downstairs, you've got to go outside to go down. Right, right. Um, one of the things I thought about was, oh my, this is, I'm terrible at this, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> is uh, from your uh, town manager's office, you could have a flight of stairs, a straight flight of stairs that would take up very little space in terms of square footage, that she would have access to that room. And... and could even enter, a, you know, a storage area, that, so it could be double doored, because we're going to want some storage down there. Mm -hmm. um, the only person's going to go up and down them stairs, town manager. Correct. So and it could be access to her office or his, his or her office. Because if you're, mm -hmm. let's just say this is the meeting room where we're, we're going to be having our town meeting or a selectman's meeting, going to be in the basement. Or if anybody else uses that, right, you're going to come in through the basement. You're not going to come through the top to go to the basement. Right. So you do a single flight of stairs, a normal just straight flight of stairs, and underneath that could be a coat closet. It could be file cabinets, could be anything you wanted to put underneath it. Right, and but how many times, and I do think you have to have a staircase, because how many times does Brody say, oh, I'll go get it, and runs in there while we're having a Not meeting? only that, prepping for, our meet, for the select board meetings. Right. Because if those right. are going to be downstairs... Right. Right. Wait, you're going outside? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make I, any sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. But, but I think we want to... I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think a flight of stairs makes sense. But more specifically targeting oh, yeah. the town manager. Right. Right. Making it more... Yeah, and he can come right out of his or her office. Because that's the other side of it is... is I don't want our town manager lugging this stack of things up right. and down a flight of stairs. Right. And you, that's what's going to happen. Well, but you'd but have her walk all the way around the parking lot. <laughs> Just put a dumb waiter in. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's, that waiter. could good be done. <laughs> you could have one right here. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, those. Are, uh, yeah. But yeah. once you take the library out of it, yeah, we can save some money on this building. I mean, I originally went into this thinking about well, six hundred square feet doesn't really cost us much, but it does gum up the works. I don't. I really don't. You take the library out of the top or not, you're not going to make that building much smaller and get town meeting in the bottom. Mm -hmm. What if you did this? What if you didn't take, like, say, we're looking at this in terms of the entire room that I am living in this conference room right now. If you, you're talking in terms of taking that entire 20 feet off. It does make the building smaller, but what if you did something where it only took 12 feet off? That's what, that's what I'm... So I don't that, think that way your area downstairs is still big enough to... So with your temporary. computer program, can you lay out chairs like this like you would do for a meeting area? Yeah. Because I, I really think... You'd like to visualize it. I'd like I, to see how well, many chairs... Yeah. I think and if I you lay it. this room out with 100 chairs and you have a walkway down the side or up the middle, and then you leave an adequate space in between yeah, the like chairs... Well, yeah, the table. in the six-foot scenario, you're... No, but it I mean, is like an airplane. Yeah. No, so I mean, a, a, realistic, like maybe a, a, a realistic layout. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I agree. Right, no, that you really have to face facts. You know, like technically you speaking, you take up six feet, but... You're not but you're gonna sit back, here against so might, right. Might, might you know what I mean? You're gonna have people elbow you're to elbow here, but not this way. No, it's like being in the middle seat. Nobody yeah. wants to be in the middle seat. <laughs> but I mean, it's no different right here. So if you're gonna lay out for a table in four chairs, 
Well, and that's how much kind of, floor footage, how much square foot do we have right now for this little tiny... Right. I mean, we... Now this we, table is what? These are what? Ten, ten feet? Yeah. Ten by eight, three? Eight. I would eight, say two eight by eight. Eight by three? But you figure when we go no, to town this, meeting, now it's it's us three right. with Bridie, the clerk, the clerk, all at the same table. We, and so, I mean... Well, and I, I honestly, I was hoping that we would do kind of a podium type thing, like what Dexter has built in other towns where your select board sits oh. up. Oh. Elevated, you know, chair, town manager, and they, yeah. and that's a fixed unit. You yeah. conduct your meetings from there, your town meeting, all of that. Yeah. Space for the moderator, moderator, and that's just there. Set. You just added a hell of a lot of square footage. Yes. You're right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, I agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that. We can't go smaller and keep that. Cause, but I really think if you take 100 chairs and lay it out. I, I think no, I don't want four right. feet in between everybody. That's not what I'm. Right. You know, right. Like if you go down to the cross right now. And you go into theirs, they have chairs very similar to these, but they all interlock. Right. You can't be that person that slides a chair over. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, they so, hook to each other. Yes. They all pin yeah, yeah. right in a solid So it's like row. a movie theater. Yes. So, I mean, you even if you go with that scenario and lay that out there, I think it's... It's, and you know, if you have a crowded a town meeting, they may have to sit like it's in a movie theater. I mean, that happens. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it, I mean, we've seen. I have not. We haven't had meetings, but historically, there've been meetings in this room where the people are packed in the hallway. Oh, we the hallway. To, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it happens. We've had. I bet we've had. Oh, I bet we've had seventy-five right here. Yeah. I mean, she was full house. No doubt. So we just. Wow. Uh, you, we just. We don't really know. But right. We want to know but, what we're what we're going to buy. You know, I, are we yeah. Hundred seats. We're going to buy hundred fifty seats. And I think if you're going to do away with that, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Like I said, if you cut off twelve feet. I mean, technically, that's 20% of the building's volume. So that's 20% less materials, mm -hmm. strictly speaking. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I mean, you could do that, and I think you'd still have a lot of room down, down in this multi-purpose area. And, I mean, I don't know how the library is set up now, but, I mean, if you've got stuff against the wall, maybe that's fixed, but, like, if you have aisles or anything, make those movable. So then you can kind of adapt the room to whatever it needs to be. But I think if you, even if you cut... You know, twelve feet off. That that area right now is is roughly fifty one feet. Um, so fifty one by twenty eight. You know, that's fourteen hundred there. So, but but I mean, cutting twelve feet off, I think you can as long as if you, as long as you don't need this, um, that's going to lend itself better to having more space um, for the things that you do know you're going to use. Yep. Um, I just want us to be able to have an an A and a B price, so that there is a difference. So yeah, no library and no library. You, what did you say, Dale? I want to give them. This is. This is it. This you don't want it. to give them too many choices. Well, because no. I, we're at a crossroads on the library. I can tell you. Do I they know, need to put their feet to the fire and just say, yeah. "Are no, you no. coming or are you joining?" No, us? They'll, 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 they'll have. They'll be a part of it if we want it. But I, I just think it's time I, I think that it's, we present the options to the community. Here's what it's going to cost. We know what the annual budget is. Mm -hmm. We're going to pay this much extra for the building. And here's the alternative. Mm -hmm. It would be this much less. Uh, your annual costs are going to be reduced by 99.9%. .9 and everybody's going to be enrolled in a local library. Mm -hmm. And then they vote. Which we want one, we don't want one. But if we don't have anything, if we don't have an A and a B. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. now uh, moving on just a little bit, but, but with in light of we're looking at this conference area and just saying we're going to you know, decrease it. One thing that I think we all saw was that there's no private office for the town manager. Right, and that was going off the original sketch. My thought was that this would kind of become that. Oh, okay, okay. But I didn't, okay. I didn't label it. I again, okay. strictly speaking, on one I was given for a sketch. That was my thought too. I was like, um, okay, she's probably going to want her own, her own office. I right. think. But, right, right, right. Okay. Um, and not only that, I mean, you've got a storage room there, and this can be adapted a couple ways, and I'm going to see it's already going to change anyway, um, because we're going to want that entrance that's on this back side now to be on this mm -hmm. front side, non, actually non-water side, the high side. Right, right. Um, right. And you're still going to want two exits, but, um, you know, I think as long as uh, that storage room will probably get smaller. I mean, my simple, the simple solution here would be to um, take that, take that space that's there right now 
and I would, I would almost give it to the office. I mean, if this needs to be a little bit bigger, because that's 10 feet, it's a little bit narrow. So about probably 12 feet. How big, I wonder, is, is Brighty's office now? I don't know, anyway. Well, and that's big. one of the things, too. If you want, I can take measurements and kind of take a comparison. Okay. But even um, this, to me, this office area, 13 and a half by 24 feet, that's huge for two people. Yes, it is big. That's true. You know what I mean? So when you look at 20, 13 by 23, that's got three desks laid out currently. Yeah, and I, I, <clears> I've <throat> tried to put the desks, because those are huge desks. You really don't need no. uh, a, a four by eight desks. No. But those are like executive desks in there. All right. Um, well, the other thing, too, is, I mean, if we're going to, if we do what I, the other thing, we never talked about this before. This is what we, another idea we've had. Um, the town manager and even ourselves, we run into situations where we need to have that private conversation. Executive so, session. Executive session, or if just the town manager in general. So this is where, if we leave this like this, this scenario with the deputy clerk, the clerk, and the town manager all in one open area, in one functioning room, then this being a storage area could turn into that private room, which is no more than you know, a round table with four or five chairs or whatever, so that we could use it as an executive session area, but the town manager could also use it for any type of private meetings they need or one-on-one -on -one conversations where she doesn't need everybody sitting at the, her desk with everybody else's things around it. You know what I mean? Right. So it would be less of an office, more of a smaller kind of conference, it, private yeah, it's conference a room. Yes, and that's, that's what I was envisioning. I think we might have mentioned that as far as like a break room. Remember, Bridie said, yeah, that's where you could have the counter with the microwave. Sure, I mean, 100%. You could do the same thing. Well, and, and, and if you have that big a space, you've got room for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I kind of flipped this uh, last night. One of the things that I, I so this, I'm on Route 23 right here. And, that, and this is They're oriented. On the high side. Yeah, and this is the same thing. This is so the way we have it right now. You come, you 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 walk in the building, and the you'd walk inside the building, and then the office would be here. I saw in the office. So basically, you got the southern exposure, the sun shining into the office. You enter here, wide hallway. But at the end of this hallway is a big information area where you get your law licenses, all the booklets on ATVs, and all, all that could be the bulletin board for... Tax maps. Tax maps would fit could in be, this area. Yeah. The town manager's office is not even connected to the office. Move her to the other side of the building. Now she's totally private. And we, I can enter here to a, a large storage area, office supplies, a mop, that sort of thing, yeah. and a restroom. And we don't have a restroom on the first floor for the public. You no, really don't need a restroom if you're coming to register your truck. Right. True. Okay. If there's no conference room, you know, big right. conference room. Right. We do, right, but the, the staff needs a restroom. Right. Right. And, and, and so that can be yeah. off in the corner. And in fact, there won't even, nobody will even be able to see it. You'll enter into the storage closet and the restroom will be used by the employees and the town manager. And the town manager has this big office with a desk in it for private meetings. And she's segregated from the public. Uh, they, mm. they can't lean in and say, hi, Bridie, yeah, can yeah, I talk Bridie to you? They make an appointment on this side to mm -hmm. see her on that side mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. she's in here. Um, mm -hmm. That's what Litchfield did. That's why it wasn't, I mean, they, they kind of bifurcated it. Um, the only thing I see that's kind of clunky because a lot of things she does is in the other office. She's going to be doing this all day long. I don't know about that, though. I think a lot of what she does is... Calling a contractor and saying, I got a beaver dam. That, that it means these ladies are sufficient. They know what they're doing. That's true when they're both here. Yeah. But if they go to lunch or if one's on vacation or one's going to the bank and Bridie's here, she's interacting with the public and helping doing all that stuff. So that would be, that would be a great question for her. Yeah, that would be. Is this, which would help I'll facilitate your of, day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the other thing that I don't have access to. Do you be part of? the office or should the right town manager the office be separate I, I don't like about that scenario is is <clears throat> currently things are going very well in the office <laughs> so i'm not concerned about today today <laughs> but as we all know as people change and the dynamics change in that office 
it's very important that that town manager is very handy to that office to mm -hmm. really know what's going on. I, I don't disagree with that, I, but I also see personnel matters being handled uh, much more professionally and with less liability when you have the privacy that the town manager should have. We don't have problems right now, and hopefully we never will Correct. again. But when she wants to talk to a town employee, whether it's a public works employee or a fireman, yeah, she's got to pull them all the way through the office, right, right. And, and and behind a door, which is everybody Not can hear, private. everything is being said. You're, you're saying the same thing. Now you're going to get up out of an office, go through a door to go through a door. <laughs> hey, you need to come see me to go through a door. Well, no, but I'm door. talking about the conversation when you're talking the legal. Yeah. And nobody's in your office is not the public is not in your office. They can't even see it. That's all. Um, but if this is 13 by 24, the public ain't going to be in there either. That was my understanding. So you have the windows there. Which is, that is yeah. one thing I like about this, though, too, because that was my concern here, too. Now, with, you know, you know, COVID, social distancing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't know that that's gonna going to go, go away. on forever. And, right. right. Well, but I like the idea of having more room in the lobby if you needed to. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, just so people, like if you had a couple chairs that they could sit and wait or, you know, at least you're not, you're not cramped into a narrow hallway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. And well, the other thing that I was thinking out of this private office is a single flight of stairs that only the town manager has access to. She can lock that door, and it's not the flight of stairs itself won't take up much room downstairs. Like I said, we'd turn it into a closet underneath if we want to. Um, and so that could be anywhere here. I mean, you could put a door here and you get down a flight of stairs. Um, and I don't know what, how, what people are going to think about no restroom. I mean, I think there are people now who just stop here to use the to restroom. To use the restroom. Probably. Mm hmm. No, but even they stop steady at the town, at the. You see a car every boat every time I go out of the wreck fields at that portable. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, but that but that can change. I, and, and it's well, been we, we didn't you talk about having a, a space for bathrooms possibly within this building that was intended for outdoor use? We we discussed that with you, yeah, yeah. And you know, that was a I mean that was just something that we threw around That's whether a big that, wish list that's yeah. been talked about for a very long time. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> I mean that was just something that we you know do we do that? Do we do that? Yeah, I think that we also talked about uh, a, a, a big cement holding tank that, like they do at the boat launches that you pump, you know, every fall and really almost impervious to vandalism, stainless steel. In, in, we probably have a good setting for that uh, as I, opposed I, to tying it into your leach field. Um, the vandalism side is the big thing for me. If, you know, a swell or else one of those tanks and then if you had a mason come in and you put up cinder block walls and, you know, the worst case scenario, somebody's going to spray paint on it that you can paint over it. Mm. You know, you start talking about putting in a, a nice add-ons and bathrooms and rest areas and somebody leaves the door open and the next thing you know, you're freezing up the town office or, yeah, you, you know, know, a water pipe breaks or... Well, I don't even then, want them feeding into our leech field. And then, you're right, and then you got to clean it as opposed to, you know, having Foss just take care of the, the porta potty. So we've been, you know, we've gone around, around and around and around. I mean, it would be nice. It'd be a... Have you ever been to the Rockwood Boat Launch? Mm, actually, yeah, I have. Yeah, if you take the ferry over to Kenny Hill. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They have that set up there. The state has all those porta potties. Mm -hmm. They're stainless steel, you know, the throne. Yeah. And that's over a big cement vault that I'm sure they pump every... Well, that's or spring. what you're talking about is what I want to do with camp, and that's that is a thousand gallons, twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, and it's three hundred bucks for that stainless steel that a toilet seat mounts on it, and they come with a six inch. And you can literally go in there and hose that thing down. You're yeah. not going to hurt anything. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. I haven't got the details yet for Foss, but if we ever want, I'll get it because right. they we come have and clean a, it out, right? Well, we have Foss right now for a porta potty camp, and we talked to them already. Uh -huh. And they said that if we do put one of those privy tanks in, right. they will completely maintain it for us. They didn't tell us what it was going to cost yet, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I know what we're paying for a porta potty. So I'm sure it's you know what I mean. It's going to be a sure. What what is it for a porta potty now? So Hundred bucks a month. Hundred bucks. So that's what we pay residential. I'm not okay. sure if the town okay. a better deal. Or, right. But. Huh. But we do need bathrooms downstairs if you're going to right. have... That was, that was one of my things on the list that you and I talked about. Um, downstairs, there needs to be a bathroom. Can we get away with one good-sized bathroom? Because that's all we're using in the fire department, right? That's right. 
And that's not, and even, not even a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's, you can't say that because that's an existing building. Right, you, right, right. Right, you got to figure out as far as like the occupancy is going to make a difference in how they specify the restrooms need to right. be and all that. But I don't think they, they need all that to for what it is. Oh, is well, the question right? is, do you need right. two? Uh, again, it depends on the occupancy um, and mm-hmm. obviously the building. Do you need two? Oh, do you need the ladies room and the men's room? Oh, oh, I meant, I mean so. the vault. Oh, I don't. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. No, that's stuff. If we have the storage area up top, we don't need a vault downstairs as well. We need okay. five cabinets. That's it. That's, that's, you have to maintain certain amount of records, mm-hmm. but you also need to dispose of certain amount of records. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my thought is is the more space you give the store, yeah, the, you're going to store it. The more lax you are yeah, disposing. about disposing. But Parkman doesn't have a vault. Okay. Okay, I'm sure they have a, they lock things up. Right, but right. They're not, okay, okay. It's the same deal. I mean, you don't need a walk-in safe like what we have. No. I mean, there's no... There's no requirement. Able, you need to be able to have it secured, but it doesn't have to be a safe... So I, I was asking, what do you think about uh, the ladies' room and the men's room? Do you need one of each? I mean, I think it's nice. I think I think it's you know I. Sometimes there's a line to use that bathroom over in the fire department, and you know, so then you're sitting. You, do I go sit down and wait, and then the line? Then I'm out of line. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But honestly, you know, I wouldn't decide. It's just like what he said, there's laws about this. You're yeah, so see, that's what you need to know. The state says you can have one. Yeah, we definitely one. need to know if, that. Right. If they say right. what the intended occupancy is, it make a difference yeah. in what, what we have to. I mean, right. So yeah, I'm, then it dictates it, and it's pretty straightforward. Right, right. But if you have to, that's a lot of lost space, because it doesn't get used very much, and you can't use it for much of anything else. No. And they, you pretty much guarantee they're going to need to be handicap accessible, so yep. you're looking at 10 to 12 feet at the very, very minimum for yep. space. Oh, is that right? And they see, we've got two bathrooms here that are huge. Yeah, they're And, and my, my, my hope is that one of those downstairs is enough. But right. But you could do it differently too. You don't have to do the like what we kind of have. We have it separated out. You could make the room a little bit longer, and you could narrow it up to like six feet. Yeah, you, you and back to back. If you're, sure, you're you could have like say yeah, yeah. six yeah. by eight, yeah. six by nine, six by ten. Yeah, you're right about that. It doesn't need to be two of these. No. Well, you could have one handy, you know, ADA, and then the other one. Well, I think if you're required to have two, you're gonna get stuck having two handy. Oh, oh, oh. I don't. I don't think if it says two, yeah. you can have. Them. Well, so so that's a state requirement. That's yeah. for federal, a commercial. Could be federal. I, I don't oh. know. Yeah. Well, it's municipal, so I'm not sure what's. That's really the big thing about this whole thing that we need to all understand. Is right. It has to fo- follow municipal code. Same way as sprinkler systems and everything else. I mean, right. I, we've already heard. Yes, you need them. No, you don't. <laughs> right. Right, right, It'd be right. nice to see it right in somewhere. You're all set. You don't need it. Okay, that's the direction we're going to go with then. Right. I don't want to try to save money and not do it and then get it all done and find out. Yeah, oh, well, we, we need to build that. it up to... to we got to do it. needs to be right. 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 Yeah, I would assume at this point that you're going to have to based on the use of the building. Um, I think it's easier to assume that you're going to have that cost there and then have, be able to pull it out if you don't need it. You but mean the We was already cost? there. Fully agreed with it. Yeah. And then we had somebody else tell us we didn't. So that's why I right. I still think we do, and I think there are. It should really isn't very hard to find examples. I mean, if you if you go to Parkman, you go to Levan. You, you I mean, you just call them. At the end of the day, I think once we get a those floor, are newer newer buildings. Once you get a floor plan with square footage, and what we're doing, and you just send it down, and I'm sure somebody can say yes or no. Yeah, fire marshal office. They should be able to help you out. Yeah, the rules are going to be the same for every town. Right. Yeah. And it's all off square footage and occupancy. And that's going to tell you how many bathrooms or how many... Right. Yeah, and we're, I mean, I don't think occupancy is the potential peak once in 20 years. Occupancy is the probably use. some average over the year. No, it's like, it's your intended use. So if you're going to design that downstairs as a meeting area and it's going to be designed to seat 80 people, then they're going to deem that it's no different than a restaurant. I'd be surprised if that's the case. If, if, if there's a possibility that you might seat 80 people once a year, Versus a restaurant that's seating 80 people every day, it, it, I'd be surprised if they treat them the same way. They might. They might. Uh, and I think that this might government be, yeah. might be a good question to put out <laughs> to fire marshal's office too. Yeah. 
Right. Now, is that something you can find out for us? I yeah. can. Yeah, I can contact him for you. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, uh, the sooner we knowing we, the rules. Yeah. Streamlines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of oh, that, yeah. We really like what you've already presented to us, and we'd really like to continue. Right. With you through this process. Right. I don't so know if you was, actually got that juice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we're not yeah. just dumping more on you for no reason. <laughs> no, we don't no. want to talk to. We're we're happy with what you've shown us, and we want to continue with just you working on this project with us. So. Yeah, and, and I think going any further and then saying, oh, you know, oh, we got to back we up and start rules. over. And, I but mean, a sprinkler's a sprinkler. we got to buy it, we got to buy it. Uh, two bathrooms, that could change the layout. It could. Uh -huh. That's greatly, especially upstairs or down. Or I don't know how that's going to work. I can't believe we're required to have a restroom for the public upstairs. Just, like, does the post office have a public restroom? No. No. Nope. I don't think so. No, but most people go in the post office for 15 minutes. It's different Same story. here. <laughs> oh, you come here, you pay <laughs> well, yeah, your taxes, up, and you upstairs. leave. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. 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 If we didn't have this, a seat, this As long as we don't have a community room or a library or anything on that second floor. Right, right. Then Do you have any office, public sort of... I would prefer needs. not to have a public restroom if, there's, if the only public activity is right. with the municipal office. Right. You know, paying taxes, licensing your dog. That yeah. sort of thing. It's all about. I mean, typically speaking, you're only in. You're in five minutes. Is correct. Five to ten minutes is really all you really need to be here. Yep. Right. Just like the post. That's why I, don't, I I toy with you know having a place for people to sit. I mean, you really don't want that. No. Uh, but I do think a hallway, a, a, a oversized hallway, gives you a. No, and, and I think it has dual use. Yeah. We could a tax maps could be there. You have an information center. At the end. People don't feel crowded. Right. Right. Um, and there's plenty of room for. Three or four people who stand and wait in line. Right. Well, because we've already talked about that. That's the. I'm not sure how the girls are going around it right at the moment, but that is one of the clunky things we have, and we would have currently with this layout. Is we want the tax maps out here somewhere for everybody to view. So we've talked before. Whereas we did this, we could actually put them in the conference room, or you know what I mean. But a wide hallway would work just as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. And I did very similar. I just the entrance into the office was at the end of that hall instead of. Where's your secondary exit? What, that, well, we could put it in. You know, you could have, you could have another a separate entrance. This is twenty three. This takes you in. This would be for citizens coming mm -hmm. in to do business. You could have a separate entrance in this office just for staff. Oh, I'm and, just thinking. Look, fire marshal. Are they going to mean typically have an in and out? Are they going to require you? I don't know. Some of the, you know, uh, like... But you do have the staircase to the basement. You can go out that way. I don't know if that would... Well, like all of glass. this is ground yes. floor. So, I mean, you could you could go out the window as long as they, they got to have open enough. There's a term for that. But. Yeah, egress windows. Egress. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm fine with that as well. I mean, I just... Same deal. Because this is never thing. really going to have, uh, on, on a normal functioning basis, it's never going to have more than three people in it. Never. I mean, it could. I mean, you could have a selectman in there talking to them, but, but for the most part, it's clerk, assistant clerk, and occasionally town manager. Right. Public Tax stays assessors. out of that room altogether. Right. Tax assessor is the only other one. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you, you, you could have an auditor. That, right. But for well, there's a lot of room as you have it drawn right there for three uh, desks, no, three desks, need, tables, yeah, storage. Yeah, little. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty confident with what, what you got there. I mean, you could lay it out like that if you wanted to. Because really, I mean, a lot of the time they're going to be at the window. Mm -hmm. Well, and the way yeah. uh, we had it, I got this as separate windows. We had separate windows here. The way uh, Litchfield did it is you had one big window, so two people could stand and be serviced at the little. same time. Now, well, there, and this was, you know, there was no glass, <coughs> uh, but it, we, there was no getting any. I mean, you would, sure. it, was it was here. Oh, chest high. Chest high. And then you signed your check. And, but two, the clerk and the assistant clerk could service you at the same time mm -hmm. um, and and the same idea though that beside you were all the law books and the ATB rules and the tax right. maps were at the right. other end those um, are but I will say that the two windows with regard to privacy I was here the other day waiting to I forgot what I was doing. but anyway the woman that was there one had a little kid that was just raising hell but also was trying to pay her taxes, back taxes. And, and so, you know, that's all, you know, and with her cash and, you know, and so, you know, the privacy of sort of, you know, not being right next to that person paying their bill. And well, what, if you did, what if you just did a single opening with a divider? 
You, you so could do that, like a teller. If, if you did that six right, months that, ago, that way everything runs continuously through. You just put a divider in there. And, I, mean, I mean, it's not going to completely eliminate it. I right, mean, as, right. Aside from having a, like a separate booth, but it, I mean, it does help. Mm-hmm. I don't, and I don't see a lot of cost associated with that. Right. Uh, and I think visually, I don't really like the way this is set up now. That they, they can't see people no, around. No, they can't see. So I'd like that to be waiting. more glass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and the same thing, it's almost like the townspeople can't see what's in their oh, town no. office. Right. Uh, I think they feel, you should, hey, Lord, I think. Right, right, walking by or yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, that wouldn't be very expensive. It's just a question of. Des- that's more design. A feel. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And that opens it up to it doesn't yeah. feel like so. Yeah, so and much. all that southern sunlight comes mm-hmm. right through into your hallway. Hallway, yeah. right. Yeah. Instead of feeling a little bit like a dungeon. Right. Yep. Yep. I just think simple is better. Yeah. So, I mean, Dale, yeah, what were you saying as far as one? I, I was talking to Nick when you were. Just, oh, I was just thinking to go back six months ago when that scenario you was in, and you both would have been crammed into that office. In, so yeah. Asked. Nick, b- b- before we did the, had this set up, you walked in there, and then there's a there was a counter. So then you were side by side. There was no privacy. Yeah, there was no privacy. Yeah, no privacy. Not at no. least you're one at a time right now. Right. Right. Well, I mean, do you think it would really be an issue to do a one at a time at this point, or? I kind of like the idea of the two, because typically speaking, we are a one at a time kind of place, but you get around tax time, and, you know, I've seen many times Thursday afternoon when people are paid, you've got a couple people in here trying to register vehicles and still have one waiting, so... I think it, the two window scenario is is important. Yeah, because for example, I, she was paying. To, she was there, and so she was. You know, it was taking a long time because she was trying to deal with this kid sure. who was just raising hell. So she was. And so I was standing here. So they didn't know I was standing. I was just. Right. To, I think I was dropping something off, um, or I was getting a phone number from her. So I was standing here waiting, waiting, waiting. And I didn't want to go up and say, "Hey, I'm here." And so, you know, I, I think I think two windows is... I, no, I, I think we should be able to service two people at once. Ideally. I've been here so many times when there's already somebody at the window, and there was somebody waiting, and then when I got up to the window, I was talking to Lorna, and then she started talking about personal stuff to me, and this guy was sitting here, and I was like, there's somebody waiting for you. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay. Yeah, well, so, I mean, we're making the best of a, right. a less than perfect situation. Right. But in our new building, hopefully, visually, you're going to be able to see people at, right. in the queue. So, right, right. Um, yeah. But that's the other thing we got to keep in mind because who knows where. I'm hoping that once election hits, COVID's going to disappear and six weeks <laughs> gone and then we go back to normal. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> is he just going to vote COVID out? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't think it matters who it is. It's, gonna, it's probably going to go away. Yeah. I think oh, you'll find well, either way. What are people thinking that? You're kidding. Well, that I mean. Is this going to go away? No, that, <laughs> that the, the height the, will go away. Wow. It's not, you, look at the, you look at the numbers, uh, how many influenza cases we've had this year that are non-reportable. Mm-hmm. And then you look at the death rate for this year, which is... A From huge, influenza? Just period, in total. Oh, oh, oh. It's oh. a huge decline. Oh. So, yeah, no, yeah. those are going somewhere, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah I mean, they're they, still dying. The, those people are dying. That's where it's tough, though, because, I mean... It, it's so easy to use even the facts to distort what's actually happening. Oh, yeah. Well, it's interesting. I, if you ask the average person, how many people die in America every year? Just just everything it. from falling off a bridge to cancer. Right, right. How many people die? Most people have no idea. It's roughly 3 million. Uh, that's about what it is. Some use is 2.8, uh, 3.1. So a year and a half from now, when we look back, uh-huh. if we come in at 3.1 million... It's the same number. It's going to be pretty much a typical year. Except for we're pushing kind of closer to 2.8 this year. Well, it would just, just be more... Uh, it's down. <laughs> I mean, well, if, if half of your deaths are... If that, they're correct, and half of the deaths are nursing home deaths, your average nursing, nursing home stay before COVID is 36 months. So for everyone that's in there a year, there's someone in there five. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I'm sure if you have comorbidity, you're less than 36 months because, I mean, that's just the reality of it. So, of, of all these nursing home deaths, how many of them were going to die this year? Because oh, they're only going to last 36 months. Yeah, well, basically at that point, you know, there's not, I don't know if it's maybe a partially a mental issue, but this is the same thing. It's like when you go into an emergency room, it's just, you can, you can tell. It's just, <laughs> you can smell the despair. Mm. Same thing in a nursing home. Right mm. of a morning meeting we have at work, 
that's part of HR's role now is to mention COVID as far as you know the state's level and the county's level and how many cases we have in Piscataquis County now. Every morning. Do, yeah, do every we have? Morning. Do you have enough yet on both hands or? No. <laughs> But we have a, there's one case showing in Piscataquis, and then somebody's, well, we're, hopefully it's not in the area. And it's like, well, no, it's probably in Florida. And everybody, yeah, right. everybody laughed, and it's like, well, no, I'm being serious, because the, the first case that got reported in Piscataquis County wasn't Florida. Right. But they were a resident of Piscataquis County. Is that right? Yeah. They are reporting the number of your residency. It's not where the case is. Yeah, no, I knew it was... Based, it was tagged to your residency. Correct. So what you could I be in find, California and be a Piscataquis. Piscataquis. What I find fascinating oh. about all this, and this is where I think what you're saying about the election comes into play, this type of discussion, aside from you know, it's anybody dying is a horrible thing, simply having this discussion for some people yeah. enrages them. Mm. Absolutely mm. come off the rails. Mm. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really get that. It doesn't have anything to do with COVID. It's just... No. They're I just get so at. invested in this. God. I got screamed at two weeks ago by a little old lady. I was coming out the store, walking across the parking lot. She was, wasn't out of her vehicle. She wasn't planning on getting out of her vehicle. <laughs> but she decided to give me heck because I didn't have a mask on. Because it's the law. So. No, it's interesting. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> but the way it's I see people in their cars by themselves. Driving along with a mask, mask on. <laughs> So now they need to have masks with built-in um, oxygen sensors in them. Did you see how many people? <laughs> I went to a funeral the other day. It was out to do a reception, and there were several people double masked. They had N95s on, and then they had their own homemade cloth thing over it. I see, I see a picture the other day. It was of an orchestra, and they're all in masks, and they all have a hole in them. So they can the oh, my God. Oh, well, oh, they look it's good. The same, it's the same thing, too. Those... those I find a lot of those people that are very particular about it, you just notice them, and it's like, every so often they pull that mask down, and you notice it's like, okay, that mask is not doing its job anymore. No, yeah. no, no. It, it's got to be over your nose, too. It has to be over your nose. But, well, and one of the cities, <laughs> actually, now, is requiring you to replace the mask between bites. So when you're in a restaurant, you're allowed to go to a restaurant, but what? you take a bite of food, and then you put the mask back up. That's, oh, my. Now, all of that touching of your mask makes your mask useless. Oh. My but God. these kinds of conversations, some people find them really upsetting. They don't want you to tell them that. No. Right. All right. Yeah. Anyway, we're not designing I know, our building. I know, I know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but get, going all the way back to what Dale said, you know, are we going to have to be separated for whatever reason? Is the next. next but I would just let them say is when you, the, the wide hallway helps with that yes. scenario. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just, if we're going to go with two windows, I definitely would make sure spacing as far apart as we can. So yeah. that way there. Yep. Because I can see the future just because of what you just said. Obviously, this group isn't all that concerned about this. Right. But there but are others that are. I can They're, see right. down the road, if you had two windows four feet apart, oh my God, I can't believe you do that. They're you not four, I mean? you're right. They're not six feet apart, so you can't use yeah. this one. So that's different. No, and they're going to want plexiglass and an air circulation system over each window. So, um, but I mean, I, we'll deal with it. But I, I think the, the wide hallway, and that's what I'm saying, I would just, we just got to do what we can do as far as the windows. Okay. And I just, I like the wide hallway because, A, like you said, it, it's it more comfortable better. for it people. Feels better, yeah. uh, and we can utilize that space. Mm -hmm. It's not a waste. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly if we get the tax maps out there and there's plenty of information and posting to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, anyway, that's, I guess, mm -hmm. that's a start. Yeah. That's yeah. the non library. That, that, yes. Uh, yeah, I lopped off quite a few feet. And I, I felt like I was scrimping with this. We could add, like, you don't have to lock, take the whole library off. You could right, add right. 10 more feet. I would, I would, but, seriously, I would, I would like to, if you, if you could lay out. Do we want to say 100 feet, 100 people, 100 feet, 100 people? Yeah. Is I that mean, the number? I've never been to a town meeting that had over 100, but I know we've had them. But I've never But if we one. say we're going to, our goal is 100. I think that's a fair goal. Especially if you do 100 and you got room behind or off to the side. Because right. if you didn't have a seat, you'd have at least standing room. We always have some people that stand anyway in right. the back. They won't yeah. sit down. They won't sit. <laughs> so, but if we could base it off 100 chairs and be able to walk around them, then that's places somebody could stand, you, so you could give another 25, 30, whatever, if you needed. Mm -hmm. 
And then you have to have a little bit of room for a wheelchair or two, you know, the, no chairs and whatever. That's what I mean. If yeah, you, yeah. But if we yep. design that footprint, right, and then whatever that is, and whatever you need for mechanic area, the same deal. If you don't need a vault, but we're gonna have to have a bathroom. The same space, basically. Yeah. Same yep. space, about it's one for one. You know, and whatever we would do differently for the staircase, figure out how to manipulate that in there. And whatever this footprint is, is we're kind of committing that that's what we're going to build. Correct. In fact, it kind of dictates right. Correct. the whole building. And then yeah. we can stretch or right. make that work. That or, makes the upstairs. That gives us the footprint on the upstairs. And then we'll... And basically what's going to happen, if, if we design that, that's kind of our A plan. And then the B plan is with the library. And when you, when you add a library, you're going to change the footprint. And the upstairs office is going to end up larger than you really need. Because we're going to design it for what we need. And then when you when you add the library to the downstairs, you're gonna to have to change the- I'd add library to the upstairs. You're still gonna to have to, to change, if, if, if we build it, if what we need, right. and then you're gonna add the library someplace. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you add it upstairs, your office isn't gonna be big enough. If you add it downstairs, you just push your foundation out enough so they have the 600 square feet. You're gonna to have to push it out either way. Correct. The whole thing get bigger. That's right. why I wanted, I'd like to be able to say, yeah. here's A and here's A plus. Yeah. So we know what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really change the configuration much upstairs, I guess. I mean. The only thing is if you put the library upstairs, then you need a bathroom, a public bathroom. No, I wouldn't, that's why I wouldn't do that. Oh, okay. I, oh, okay. I, I, the library, and that's, this is, okay. came to me okay. last, like, the conference room, any public meetings Has should be all upstairs. be on the same floor so we don't have to duplicate I got you. restrooms and down there. Correct. Correct. Okay. So really, we're going to work our way from the bottom up. Now, yes. the other option yes. is to yes. flip it. You could put the town office down yes. and back. You scrum around back, and, that's, and, you come, and everything is on the first floor. And your meeting room, which is only used occasionally, and is I don't either. You don't I like don't know that? why, but I'm but you saying, like, to me personally, I'm viewing this. We know we're going to use this in early in the year. It's realistically, it's all it's ever going to get used for. Well, if you have a library, maybe putting the library on the first floor with the community room makes sense because now, but now you still have two bathrooms. And then you have, yeah, yeah no, I don't like it. But at the end of the day, for what we're talking about, yeah. using this downstairs floor, this yeah. could be a concrete floor and we're okay. You yep. can do concrete with an epoxy over it, yep. so it looks yes, somewhat could. appealing, and that would be fine for what we're talking about now. Yep. But if we're going to put the office staff down there walking on it all day long, I really don't want them walking on concrete all day long. No, no, you put I would rather down. 100%. Yep. So yep. if you're going to do one or the other, the upstairs. 100 100 people traffic, keep them on the concrete. Right. That, that, the other that, traffic, yeah. keep them on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. But it's 100 people once a year. Yeah. It so is. it's not any really. Traffic no, but bus. still, I but mean, well, I guess you bearing. have to build it for lo well, load bearing. Seriously, I mean. I mean that, absolutely, and you wrote clear span. Obviously, it's clear span the de downstairs. So you know, if you have 100 right. people upstairs, that changes everything a lot. Yeah. 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 So I uh, recommend well, that 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 and what I did with that calculation is. Um, you know, I'd have to double check, but like, so for, like I use for instance, uh, with a, with a residence, um, your starting, your standard design value is 40 pounds a square foot. That was designed for a hundred. Okay. Um, okay. because I believe it has to be higher on a commercial project anyway, or municipal. Um, but I think, you know, if, especially in, in giving consideration that maybe that even if that upstairs needed to be the library, I think that would still work. So, so are we using uh, like I beam, I beam steel? So there's no lolly columns downstairs. No, no not right now because I figured that was, that was going to be it was going to be a pain in the neck. I mean, oh, if we, uh, one, I mean right you're going to pay for it, but it's nice right. to not. Right. The, the clear yeah. span is the way to go. Yeah, I mean, and I calculated that using a, a wood system um, because I'm more familiar with using uh, wood to to span things than, than steel. Um, steel's obviously better, but it's a little bit more of an unknown. But um, yeah, I wouldn't have put that in there if I didn't know. It was some note about you know possible post locations or whatever. But to me, that's really the goal. You're really going to try to avoid that when you yeah, for sure for a space down there. Yes. Do we need to have space for code enforcement? A separate office, you mean? Well, I'm, the only reason why I'm saying that is as we're sitting here and I just watched code enforcement open up. Dexter does. 
He goes yeah. upstairs, but. But he just goes into our regular office area. Oh, he did? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> I, that's a good question. And that would be a good one for Brighty. Has who seen that? The code enforcement. No. Uh, no, I don't believe that anybody's seen it outside no. this group. No. Because we're, I mean, the next one, a lot of people are going to see. Right. Can we, can we show it to him? Because I think that would be good to get input that way. I don't think we need to yet. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think it's premature. Yep. But if, in terms of his, <laughs> he might have too much to say about it. <laughs> well, it, but that's the no. thing, you know. It, you know, right now we're dealing with something very basic, with just looking at spaces and and layout. Um, but, but the big goal is, I mean, we don't want to have a scenario where we get to the end. It's like, okay, this makes perfect sense. And then, you know, have an issue with the structure or I don't, um, bathrooms. Honestly, or, I don't think our code enforcement officer. I, that's not where I, what I would that, personally do is once we get to that, once we get a layout the way we want it, and we actually start getting to the point of the building process, I would go far above and make mm -hmm. sure that everything we're doing is up to what we need to do. Like a because, state code enforcement correct, officer, yeah. sir, as opposed to our local yokel. <laughs> So I mean, well, it's new construction. It's not. It's, and it's one thing that we've all learned that I think we'll all agree on that the rules that apply for private sector, commercial sector, and municipal sector are all totally different. Um, so, and I know like our code enforcement, same as our planning board, they they deal with the residential side of mm -hmm. things, um, and I think this is at a different mm -hmm. part. True. I would want True. to go somewhere else with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Because I would rather know for sure that either you don't need this or you do and move it along properly. Yeah. So are we uh, in agreement that we're st lower level, public access, yes. public restrooms? Yep. If the library exists, that's where it will be upper level municipal offices. Yep. Yep. Okay. I think so. So, as far as me making changes going forward here, I mean, are we going to move to a layout like this and maybe make it a little bit bigger than what you have there is 40? I mean, maybe we go 48? I wouldn't look at that. I'd go back to go to the bottom, lay out your 100 chairs. Okay. Lay out your spacing. That's going to drive chairs, the whole thing. To your table. Yeah. You know, we're envisioning, I, once we get this all laid out, we've kind of gone to this scenario, which... Kind of works. We all have room, but and we all can talk with the town manager off to the side. But we're envisioning when we're done that we're going to have a screen in behind us, so that and I'd no like more. to see a, a podium. Yeah. So or where and everybody or sits. We're against yeah. a wall, and yeah. the screen is kind of a horseshoe thing. So you can yeah. make eye contact with each other. Uh, you need you need four four seats anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to take up some square Four footage. Five, actually. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we really need the. You got to have your clerk with you when you're doing. Well, your, and for town meeting, yeah. your, your moderator is going to be somewhere, somewhere near, near you. Near you. Yep. Yep. And really, it'd be nice if it split. Even that would be awesome if you could do that. If you could split it, with, so your moderator was in the middle. <laughs> Hollywood. No, but I. No, I, mean, I seriously. But just, these take up space. So. But I, I like the. I think. It, if, we if you had two tables that we left normally, then when it come down for town meeting, they split in the center, you just mm -hmm. turn them a little bit, and you could have your podium in the middle for your moderator. And then you've got everybody's on each side of it. Right now, we're kind of like, you know, if you're on the end, you're way down yeah, you, here. Yeah, you don't know what's going on. You, you can't know. hear what's going on, you don't know what's Sometimes going on. Sometimes it's a good thing, but... Yeah. <laughs> but and that's kind of... Two or funky. three conversations going on, you know, um, yep. And then, of course, all of the, you know, all of the electronics and all that sort of stuff, you know, the microphones, microphones sound system, sound yeah. systems, all that sort of stuff. Well, and the other thing, too, is you need a, so for like town meeting, you've got the area that we're at, you've got the moderator that's speaking, and then you need another area. So as people are coming in, they got to be, you need a table because you got to have some people that are signing, in. signing everybody in. So that's a, you got to have that. Um, you could double use that table, I guess. We never do, but as far as when we're, you have to have a ballot. Yeah, ballots. Need, you need a ballot counting station. 
Yeah, right. But you could. What is there a reason why we couldn't double dip that? Well, typically the clerk ends up staying there, sitting there, or no, no, that's usually the the two voting whoever we people. volunteer. Oh yeah, yeah volunteers yeah. on both spots. But th- those could be temporary in that you set up a table for that purpose on that day. I mean, we've always done it at the fire station that way, and. But for the but it, but takes it still up needs space. to be a space for your hundred chairs. It's a space. Yes. Yep. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yep. It's part of the, the primary layout with a hundred chairs. You got to have a and all this ancillary stuff has to exist. It all right. has to fit in that yep. footprint. That's right. Yep. That's and right. once you have that footprint, then, then that drives the upstairs. Anything okay. else? You've got a, basically there's a registration table. You come in. You, you, you you're on this I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been to town meetings before, right? No. Yes, um, a couple. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know how it works. So and then and you then come when, in, and you then, register, then, you get your little thing to vote, you sit down, but then and then there are some written ballots. So there's a there's a station that is monitored and people are counting and so and so all of that has to exist at the same time. You get a hundred people sitting. Right. Uh, and you have to think about that when you do your chair layout because yep. you've either got to, everybody's either got to come out around the edges or out through the middle or yeah, you know, that's everybody's got to be able to get There's out and get out. And, you know, yeah. when, when yeah. it comes time for voting, if, if you've got to stand there and wait for that whole line to go, if you set it up like a movie theater, it would not work no. because it's, everybody gets up at the same time to go vote. Right. And everybody has to get back to their seat. Right. So it takes more room than. And yeah. Yeah. Right, so we should at least be looking at two separate sections for so yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the edge and then the yeah. 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 couple of aisles. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you I think you could do it with one center. You know, you could go up the sides and down the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because that's uh, well, I'm trying to. You don't know how many rows and columns you're going to have. No. Uh, that's it's interesting. That's the everything is predicated on that footprint. Mm-hmm. That's right. Then after that, you may have more office space than you know what to do. Well, with. I think that's honestly what's going to happen. It's like, holy shit! I guess we got room for this room, and we got room for that. And... You know, well, I, I you know I find though is if you're gonna if you're gonna build it around that, and you have more space upstairs, it's better to have it and not need it. And I'm sure. I mean, people always find good use for space. Oh yeah. So. Oh yeah. The thing is, yeah. and I'm not an advocate of this. I'm just saying, as devil's advocate, we know there's all kinds of space around here between. The schools, oh, yeah. the churches, mm-hmm. that we can have these meetings every year and they cost us next to nothing. Correct. I mean, and, and so we could build this simply for our conference municipal room. Municipal office. Our municipal office, our conference room, and our library. And it would be tiny compared yeah. to what we're trying to accommodate. But, but I suspect, I think, I think so too. I think, I think people would like to get back under one roof. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. so that being said though too, you know, another thing is depending on where everything's going to go, but... This mechanical room that we do have in the basement, that is a pretty big footprint. And if we turn your staircase the other way, um, depending on the width of that, the idea of the closet under the staircase wouldn't work. But I bet you most of the mechanical stuff yeah, would fit there. Good. Yeah, Right. Yeah, and that's one of the things, too, it's worth having a discussion about as far as what you're going to need for mechanical space. Just look, you know, I guess it's the same. You can go a couple different ways because... Um, you know, some people, like, you can't really equate it to residences, but some people want at least a 10 by 10 room. Some people put their laundry in that room. Um, okay. But some people just need, it like, a tiny closet because they've got, you we know, radiant need. heating and the same thing that runs the radiant heat runs the hot water. I think that's um, where we're so headed. Then, that's definitely where we're headed. But what about room is clutter. a quasi-kitchen down there so that mm-hmm. you could feed people? Mm-hmm. Do you want to get into that? <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> Well, I, you know, we, yeah, if they no, bring casseroles and I right, know. we've done that at the fire department for I mean, many well, the, I guess, as, yeah, I guess that question is, is how much function do you want to build into uh, this? Yeah. You're exactly right. Exactly. That is the question. Um, because to, 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 to accommodate something separate like that, I mean, if you're going to do it, you know, as far as when you're looking at building anything, I mean, obviously no, it, it's going to be cheaper to put as many things into this building so it has as many functions and works well for those functions as possible. I think once you start introducing a mini kitchen for serving the public, you're going to go into a totally different direction 
I'm all over this. I don't think we need it, but I'm just throwing yeah, it out there because someone's going to say. If you it. have, but what if you just did counter space? I but mean, I'm just let's I'm not I talking about like any sort of appliances. I mean, if you bring like a crock pot, you plug that in or whatever. Right, you and, and a coffee, a coffee maker. Right, right. right. Yeah. I wouldn't actually put a counter space in. I would leave it blank, and if something happened, they decided to do it that year. Great, this back wall, we're going to plenty of outlets. Two, yep, two <laughs> of these, and there you go. Put crock. I I tend to agree with you. You can you can put a big coffee maker in and yeah. Where are you getting the water for the coffee maker? How are you filling that coffee maker? What, in the you, bathroom. In the bathroom. The bathroom. <laughs> in a yeah. normal size sink. Yeah. Well, yeah. have you ever tried to do that? Well, I mean, the thing I mean, is, you, if you, you just if take you, a pot and you fill it up and dump it in, I, I can make coffee. You don't camp much. <laughs> But, I mean, the thing is, if you're looking at, like, an ADA bathroom, most of the time those things sure, are going to have sure, a lot of room in them anyway, point. so... I mean, you know, a gallon of water I mean, is a lot of coffee. Maybe, maybe it's something good to consider, like, you know, hey, bring that Keurig, you know, <laughs> the Keurig there, reservoir. Yeah, bring bring, bring that in there and see if it that's fits under the sink. Of, that's a that's, that's your go, no go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, no, but it's true. I mean, if, you know, you got to have a wish list, and then you have to figure out what is important on that wish list. Yes. Um, I do think you need to think about that as far as, you know, having plugs up at that level so that if we did put tables up, at the, you know, that you have a bank of plugs or whatever it may be. You know, those... Yeah, you just need plenty of outlets for sure. Right, uh, right. Um, uh, I think, yeah, because we've always had lunch... At our town meetings, not all, yeah, not no, always. Not no, always. the last couple, the, there was nobody was there. But nobody it's was kind of a fundraiser to... thing, it, you know. Either it was, it was, the yeah, library, they didn't want to do it anymore. Um, so, but our meetings go are much quicker now because there's no food. <laughs> 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 so that's not a bad thing. Um, no, uh, I, I didn't really think you're, you're starting it into a place of if you was going to intend the new building to be something similar that. Abbott does so. You was looking at a dual purpose, multi purpose room that you was renting out to the public on. Does the Abbott side. do that? Yeah, you can do weddings and stuff yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, but I don't, that's not what we're talking about yeah. and not what we want to get into. <laughs> no. So, no, property management is not our goal 100%. No. So, with that being said, I, I don't see how you justify the, the cost of even Put thinking kitchen. about putting a mini kitchen in for no. once a year. I okay. mean, right. No, I agree. I think if the most you the just cost set up of a the table, kitchen, put a couple coffee pots and some brownies, and throw go buy twenty pizzas, and you just you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm just going over my list. So yeah, that's all. That's it was you know that's I we went over everything that was on my list. Um, and the uh, the roof lining and, and the pitches on the roof, those are good shedding pitches. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a fancy roof line. It looks good. Um, well, the idea with that, too, is, I mean, you could go with a plain gable roof, um, something like that, as far as if you're doing a trust, it's not a real big deal to do. It's not incredibly expensive, but it dresses it up a little bit. It does. It looks yeah, nice. So, I mean, that, that can be cut out. Right. And, and that's kind of what the, was the thought. There was, we'll dress it up a little bit, and if we need to, you know, we can cut a little bit of cost and, and, and go just with a plain gable roof. No, I, I think it's very important that it obviously is aesthetically pleasing. I mean, it's something that, it's a, something that we're putting down there that is going to be there hopefully for a long time and you know uh, I think that's very important um, yeah I don't want it to look like a modular home right right you know, no it, I, I it think needs architecturally to built, it needs building. to look really nice um, you have to think of asphalt shingles as opposed roof? to a metal roof you know I, Again, this comes down to preference. Like when you're looking at, and I, and I make this clarification, like if you're talking about asphalt versus steel roof, my first question is always, well, is it a screw down roof or is it a standing, standing seam? seam. Right. Because standing seam is much more expensive, but the warranties tend to go longer. Um, I think some cases up to 50 years, where shingles you're looking at 25, 30 years. I really, you know, if you, if you wanted to go with a screw down roof, I tell people that's fine. I think my whole rationale with that is that you're putting 8,000 holes yeah. in the roof yeah. and you expect all those seals to, to hold um, over what 10 20 30 right. years um, I, I think it worries me a little bit yeah yeah and and your experience does like a standing seam shed snow better than an asphalt roof oh yeah yeah it, yeah, they, it will they, I mean both metal roofs will shed snow. yeah they and they tend to lose their I don't know if you want to say viscosity it, yeah, yeah, yeah it's all after a couple of years yeah. but they'll still shed better than an asphalt yeah. roof yeah 
What's that? But I mean, with the new requirements now for like, I say new, they're not new. I mean, probably 10 years ago, they created a new uh, snow load map for, for Maine. Mm. Um, so like, I know in Charleston, it's a 90 pound snow load. Say, so they designed yeah. those trusses to hold 90 pounds a square foot right. of snow. Right. Um, That's a lot of snow. So, yeah. and that's what I tell people when they're always worried about shoveling off roofs. It's like, well, if you have four feet of snow on there, you might want to think about knocking some off. But if right. you got, you know, you 18 inches, it. and in sometimes in your location, you never get any snow buildup because the wind pulls it all up. Right. So, I mean, it, those See, are with all this extra that, eave, it's a lot easier. Now when they're down there plowing, they're just, those doors are all going to be clear when, right. when the crew comes in in the morning. Mm -hmm. it, I yeah, like the, the look of it. The bigger the overhang, the better. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like think it's that money the water. well spent. Well, as we know here, when it comes to water and foundations, yes. I would just assume get as much moisture away from the building as we can. Right, right. So. Yep. Yeah, and sliding snow and all of that stuff. Well, it's the same, I feel the same way about your, your knee wall. Six inches of concrete instead of 18. I'm, why would you do that? But... My house was built that way. Then you get a downgrade driveway, and they got six inches of so but you, cement you get wall. Flooded. You, you could easily, yeah. If, you know, and yeah. all you had to do was add ten inches, and it was never going to happen. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Well, it also depends on how the what you have for drainage for soil underneath. Mm -hmm. You know, next to the foundation, right. and how well it was waterproofed. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those stuff, all that stuff plays in there. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. I think that was that. Uh, that's it on my list. Um, I'm, I'm really, I, I don't, uh, well, how, do you feel like you've got enough direction from us to keep moving? Yeah, kind of revamp this. <laughs> I think he thinks we tipped him upside down and <laughs> totally like, ruined everything he did. Oh, it's not, it, <laughs> that never <laughs> happens, never, ever. <laughs> well, and honestly, I think, I think we should have, probably we all should have got together and done this to begin with and really hashed over What's the important thing that we really are trying to do and, and build from? Well, I, I, I'll admit, you inspired me. Because once I saw what you could do, that I, I right. felt like, oh, hold it. We can actually kind of... I, and I, I, I agree with you. I, I, don't, I think that if we sat down with Nick prior to that, it's, we just didn't... Th this, is, this process is still going to happen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and that's fine. You, you really have to give voice to any sort of second thought. And you just it, it's worth it to explore. It's worth it to take the time. And if it gets completely changed, it is what it is. It mm. needs yeah. to work. You know, mm. it, you know, you can't, you can't. It's nice to hear. That. Mm. Well, <laughs> one of the, one of the, like, you know, I was talking with an architect the other day because, you know, I was I've been working with her on this project, and I said, look, you, you can't have any ego in this. <laughs> yep. And we talked about yeah. this. You, you can't. Because right, that you can't say, well, I think this is what you really want. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. you know, that's well, what, what good, Nick wants. Right, what good is that? Right, right. 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 Now, so let's you, talk about um, the video and your outside and how that all works. Can you pull a lot, some stuff from that actual lot into when you're doing that? Or is that kind of a generic -y background? It's generic. What I can do is, um, like what you see there, I've actually... I have the ability in my, now I have to make sure I distinguish this. I have a drawing program, and then what you see in that video, that's a rendering program. So basically, I draw the building and bring it into this rendering program, and you add the landscaping and all that, and you know, furniture or whatever. But essentially, what you see as far as the building concerned, that comes from the drawing program. So in the drawing program, I can actually, what you see for the site is what I could pull out of um, for like the coordinates. So that's why there's coordinates there because I showed you that's what I pulled from. Right. And, and it's fairly accurate, so it can kind of get an idea there um, as far as the topography goes. Um, but I can actually bring that in with me and kind of contour everything. And, you know, I can't move, I mean, like I can add some big trees and stuff like that. I mean... <laughs> All those sort of right. things is like context. I mean, it won't be perfect, but I think it'll, the idea is to make it recognizable. Right. right. That's yeah. what I'm looking for because one thing that I've already been very surprised at, we had a site visit ourselves with the planning board and walked around, um, and there was a few members that was there that are lifelong residents and had never walked that property and didn't realize what that waterfront had to offer. Um, we started talking about, you know, if we can get this cleaned up and we can put in some picnic tables and a walking trail, per se, on the property and other things that we're not talking about just building a building. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's to really use that and bring more value and benefit to the town. And 
he was just, I know the person, I don't want to say he was negative, but he was fairly against, I guess would be a good word, this whole concept, until he actually walked the law and saw what the property has to offer and thought about the bigger picture. So somehow, that's what I was wondering and within that video, if we can manipulate that so that it can show some of those type of things, whether it's the trail or the... I think there's a pride factor that if we, if we can kind of connect with that, where people say, boy, this, because I, I, I think I know who you're speaking about, it. and he said, you know, if this ends up being something for the town, I could support this. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us look at that, and I'm probably guilty, of something for the town is saving the town money and making us more efficient for the next 50 years. But he looks at that maybe and says something for the town is these trails and, and right. this it's beautiful... Right, it's just, not just municipal offices. Right. We're right. talking about so just functionality. developing that piece of property, yeah. walking yeah. trails, yeah. you've got parks. We're it, proud of it. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Something yeah. you can, you can and, take and pride in. if you do yeah. that, he said, I think I could get on board with this. And that's, that was kind of telling. That was eye-opening. Yes, it was. It, it, it was. was. Yes. Um, so you realize it's, it's not just dollars and cents. Right, right. Right. Because there's a... The part, I don't Did you give a background on this building? No. This, I don't she invited right, me. Yeah, okay. she told me that you're going to have to put a lot of money into yeah, it. Yeah, we, we've already it. put a half a million dollars in, in the last 20 years. It needs another nearly half a million just for the foundation in this first floor. And you can see what it, it's a 200 year old theater with <laughs> so you you throw know, a antique glass. At it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can throw so, a couple million at it. Easy. Yeah. Uh, no. so, but if people are in no. love with it, or some people are just love it. And it's because it's character, right. and it's been here forever, and so there's quite a. This is a pretty there's, emotional thing, that, right? Right, and that's what we it. talked about was we need to shift that emotional, exactly that emotional attachment, not necessarily even from this building, but to create an, an and emotional. And this goes to what Dale was saying. I don't think uh, the town bought that property not very many years ago. Many people don't have any idea what a nice piece of property they own over there. Uh, it is. It's, it's, it's really. It is. If you took the fields off that, as a, if that was a, I mean, residentially, that's probably one of the better pieces of property mm -hmm. on that part of that whole pond up through there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty. It's yeah. very pretty. So that, that's. So we want to tap into that. I, yeah. I think that's right. Right. It needs to. It's not just a building. It needs to. It's replacing this building, and there's a lot of. You know, it, value to this building as far as people feel, you know, the, the stained can, glass windows. I and, envision that down there to be similar to what Kiwanis Park and Dover is. I don't know if you've ever been down there, yep. but, Absolutely. you know, and that's just a little carny little brook and there's a little dam. And but it's room. nice there. It's, yeah, it's yeah. nice there. The yeah. water is like, is it much bigger than this room? Yeah, a little but, pond, yeah. yeah. And it trickles over the bridge dam. But that's, all, that's all it takes. So. Yeah. And, that's but it takes, there's all kinds, that place is every weekend, there's people there. Mm -hmm. Doing family about, gatherings and birthday parties. Yep. And taking pictures. Yeah. That's right, that's right. There's no reason why we shouldn't be cap having that property be able to do the same thing for the people of Sangerville. Yep. Because we have a better piece of property oh, yeah. than what Dover has. Yep. So. Yeah, and if we can make the building as efficient as I think we can based on what we're going to say to try to maintain this void element, we can have those things. Oh, yeah, all you have to do is to give them like a 10-year outlook on what it would cost to maintain this versus building. I, I mean, I guarantee you... You would think it would be that simple. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> no, people rather raise money and put okay. an elevator in this building to go <laughs> upstairs. Yeah. So, no, he, the, the rational part of it is kind it's of... It's not rational. <laughs> exactly. It's most, people That's are literally in tears. Yeah, talking about this building. So yeah, grown about this adults building. sobbing. Yeah. So it's it's a tough. Sound, I saw this so. building as well, but it's when I'm in here to register my vehicle. <laughs> Your <laughs> new not, vehicle. <laughs> it's not for joy. I can tell you that. <laughs> and that's my that's and that's my. It is a nice building. I'm not trying to. But no. at the same token, the years of this being a central gathering point of of anything no. happy or joyful is gone. I mean. You don't come here because you want to. You come here because you have to. Right, right. <laughs> That's the only reason. That's right. But see, upstairs it used to be what basketball courts and oh, yeah. it, used it was to a be theater dance. originally. It was, it was designed theater. as a theater. Yeah. And you, the you theater the curtains are still hanging. Up and it's really the very much like building. the Dover. Um, um, oh yeah, Central Hall. Central Hall. Yep. Same sort of function that this building had. Except this is more challenging because 
the 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 room that everybody met in to watch the play or d go to the dance is two stairs. is two stories up right with balconies above that central hall at least you're on the ground floor um, and then you got balconies all the way around but this thing is it is hey heyday it was a pretty cool building right yeah. right um, it was and it, and that's the problem is you get too many people that still remember the heyday but. And then there's a whole group of people that say, oh, you don't really need to do anything. It's, it, it, it didn't fall down last year. It's not going to fall down for the next 100 years, you know, because it's <laughs> so well built. But in the meantime, we have to... We have to. Work. Right. I'm on my second tour of Selectmen, and I have yet to have anybody ask. And we did two tours on the budget committee before, and I don't ever remember seeing it as a budgetary item. Because anybody can use that upstairs anytime they want. It's, it's, rent it. It's, you can rent that out and have a party up there tomorrow if you wanted to. But I don't remember the last time that anybody's expressed an interest in using it. Right. So, if you don't have the interest... And that's what a lot of the people who, who want to restore this building are saying. That upstairs, you know, we can... You could do this and you, you can, can do, do that this with it. You could do this with the upstairs and that. So... I don't even... I think if you build this brand new building and you put a kitchen in there... I don't know if you're going to rent. Right. I mean, it's, and, uh, and that's not our not intent a, to rent. But I'm just saying, there's right. not a need in our area for that. Right now. There's too many other locations that right. are already available. That's right. Yep. So. All right. Um, Is there anything else, Nick, that you wanted to ask us about? No, I, I was kind of expecting that a lot of this would it was kind of play itself out. So. Okay. No, it makes sense. Okay. Um, you were CC'd on an email to, to all of us, so you can communicate with us as a group. Um, this morning, you, when I wrote to you, all of us yeah. were on it. So. so if, you know, gee, what do you guys think about this? Or have you guys thought about this? Or, I mean, in fact, once you kind of put your pencil to the mm. hundred seats and mm. the functionality, yeah, I'd be kind of curious as to what to you us. think, you know, our minimum realistic footprint is. Um, yeah, that would be that. I think that's going to be the first step to okay. see what that looks like. And without impeding on your time a whole lot, if you're available and you want to do this type of thing again, just let us know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's helpful. You. Yeah. So I mean, I, no, I think that's um, it's definitely worth having the conversations. It, I mean, it's only a conversation; it's your time. Um, so. so what? Ha Nick does his thing. Mm -hmm. We do our thing, and he helps us kind of put. And, and, and from here, we go to an engineering firm? I don't know. How, what, how does it go? You be, I mean, can you make drawings for us to draw, build from? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Um, like I said, I try to design something that works um, as long as we know the codes are involved. If it needs to be handed over, because sometimes there are requirements, and this, this is where I don't know. Um, because sometimes, in, maybe in this case, they require uh, prints that are stamped by an engineer and architect. Uh, I can definitely find an engineer. <laughs> uh -huh. um, but, uh, well, I guess I could find an architect too. But um, those are the things that, that, you know, maybe need to be um, researched, maybe even on my end to kind of figure out what the requirement's going to be. Um, <clears throat> because really, that's what you want. Um, I mean... I can produce something that a builder can build. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just used to, you know, you got to draw something that works. I mean, right. that's, that's really what it comes down to. Well, um, but even if I draw something that you can do a materials takeoff and a builder looks at this and says, yeah, I can build it. Um, I mean, I don't know what authority looks at these when it comes time to build. I mean, if it's just all internal, it doesn't matter. Um, you mean as far as municipal building? Right. Yeah, so right. Just, yeah. I mean, technically, does yeah. the state does the state have to look at it? And if the state has to I look don't at think it, so because I've seen towns who have literally have double wides. I mean, they're well, just parking can, it in there on a gravel. You can call down an order of double wide. It's made to be a town office right now. They make them. Right. <laughs> I don't think it's terribly. <laughs> no, they're, so they're, they're, they're making it the way out. Yes. We need if right. I mean, yeah. All we got to do is call Parkman. They just went through this. So they just built a new building. Parkman's building's not very old. But or that's, Bridie should be able to find yeah, that. Yeah, she, Bridie can do, it, it, it um, Nick, you can also direct Bridie, perhaps, you know, if, if there are things that you want her to, like, ask, 
MMA or whomever, yeah. you know, just say, can you please find this out? That so that and she she can do that. State requirements aside, though, you're you will have a, enough information so that we could hand this to a contractor and he could then say, here's what's going to cost for me to do that. And that's really where we need to yes. get to. And that's why, like, the yeah. discussions about sprinklers and all that, I mean, yep. I, yep. I'd like to have that conversation now, and yep. that way there's no surprises later. Just, well, sure. you know, you're 20%, oh, well, you got to have a sprinkler system in there. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. now we did have a, we did have a, a representative from engineering firm say we didn't need sprinklers. I remember right. that. Right, so, right. And he seemed to, so if that's, a, should be, it's either yes or no. It is, and everybody has an opinion, and I don't want an opinion. Right, you right know, now we just need to inform I mean, so we can know. I'd like to know the minimum of what is required of us to do. Right. And then we can look at it that way and say, okay, when you start shaving money, you know the minimums you have to do, and then you can, it'll give you better opportunity to do maybe right. something different somewhere else. Well, not only that, if there, you could be in a situation where there's a trigger point, where, gee, you get me oh, on yeah. this many square feet, and you have to do this. That's right. That's right. Or because you have two levels, you have yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I'm exactly And right. then we might change everything. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Double wide. Because I think it's all about <laughs> yeah. <the> square foot. <laughs> I mean, could be. Or two levels, or whatever. Okay, so right. just so when we're leaving this meeting, are you going to find that out? or? I and, will do what I can to, to and try then, to find and out. And then you'll let Bridie know. And if you see, see us, if you're directing Bridie, just so we know right. that it's moving. Yeah. Who needs to find out what? But I think doing all of that before we start, you know, really getting more content mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, because we didn't talk about, I mean, and not that this is going to change the plan, but do you make it so that it's got AC and, you know, obviously it's got to have heat. But, you know. I put heat pump on, on both floors. I mean, one heat pump would do both floors. Okay, so that's, you know. Right. Well, yeah, and these are kind of the questions that start to creep in as we, you know, right. we've kind of, obviously, right now, the big things are layout and location. Sort of concept. Things. As far as where it goes on the site and what we want it to do in terms of layout. Okay. Um, but, I mean, there are always other questions, too, like, okay, well, how high do you want the ceilings to be? Right. Like, downstairs, right. if we do an eight-foot basement, it's going to probably feel crowded down there. Um, what is but again, this? This is eight feet? It's probably eight feet. It's pretty close. A little under, There actually. you go. It's by seven six. Why? <laughs> seven. Seven? Well, it's uh, six six eleven and three quarters. Yeah. Well, you kind of tell most doors are six foot eight, and I kind of looked, and that's pretty close to the ceiling. So. Uh huh. So yeah, it's yeah those types of things. The right. feel or what it ends up. Right. So your ceiling thing. in that basement would be a little bit higher than this, possibly. Right. right. So those are the type of things that the questions that I want to ask. Because whether it ends up being, you know, a 10-foot basement or an 8-foot basement, it doesn't matter to me. But I don't want you to get to the end and say, geez, man, I wish we had 10 feet. Well, particularly if you're actually thinking about putting screens up. Yeah. The difference between 6, 11, and 10 is a lot. Yeah. If you're at the back trying to see anything. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, but those are all things that, you know, those don't, you don't, you don't necessarily need to have an architect or an engineer to have that discussion. I mean, I, I, I took from the conversation when we met a couple of weeks ago is that probably farther down the line there would be an engineer or an architect involved. But we could get 90% of it done on this end rather than having someone in, someone else involved. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, but if, if you're, you're, when you're all done, are you going to, I mean, obviously we got a foot plan, but... Like window sizes, door sizes, where the doors are, where the windows are. Windows yeah, I mean, they're already dimensioned now. So yeah, that, but, I mean, that's all going to be something that's going to be available for the next level. Right, okay. Yeah. I mean, some of it, like, we'll have to talk about, like, too, like, uh, for, like for instance, um, like, when you look at this basement wall, you'll see I put something there. Um, as far as you've got a concrete wall, and then you've got a stud wall in front of it mm -hmm. that usually is insulated, and there's an airspace there. Yep. Um, that sort of conversation, whether you want to do, you know, a two by on edge or you want to do a full two by four wall, what kind of insulation you'll do, you do an inside, outside. I mean, all those conversations, um, those are part of the fine tuning of the process that your contractor will have questions about, but they aren't really specifically addressed right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, again, you, you kind of, you don't have to go into detail, but you have to start thinking about those things. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of my approach with this. So, 
you know, for, for what it's worth, you try to think about those things. So when the time comes, it's it's a lot easier to answer. Yeah. I just, I just wish we had gotten hit to this point in June. <laughs> but we are where we are. I know, but it's a process. It's a process. Um, yeah. And, I mean, we didn't even talk about the two locations, and I think, are we all, I mean, because cost-wise... I can, I can, from what I was initially looking at, obviously to get it out here, you're going to be more expensive because you're building a road in there. Right. For yeah, sure. You're running electricity, all of you're, that. Yeah. Um, and then the other question is too with parking, like if you were going to have parking on the lower level, now we start to get closer to that. Water. Because basically what I took is I took a straight line from this corner, essentially in a straight line here, 100 feet. And we we'll say, okay, we'll put it right here. And I kind of looked at what the terrain was, maybe moved it around a little bit. And that's why those locations are pretty approximate. Uh -huh. um, but, I mean, obviously, they're, they're two very different locations. Mm. Um, but here, you know, to be honest, when we looked at this, when we went through, there's not a lot of slope there. No. So you'll have to determine something with grading to, to fix that, whereas here you might not have. So, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a little bit of give and mm. take there. So. Mm. I think if we go to the upper location, we're almost better off to push it to get a permit or however we have to do it, but move it closer to Garland Stream where you do get into that bank more. And then you do have the daylight basement option. But where it. is it considered stream and where is it stream after the dam? Mm -hmm. Now, after think, the dam, you said it was 100 feet, but before it was 75? Correct. Correct. Okay. That's correct. So we can go 75 feet from the dam back towards 23. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. so, but that's what I'm saying. Is that, but I'm sure, with anything else, when it comes to around the water, we must be able to get a permit, and we can move that in a little bit. Plus, the other thing is, is that 75 feet is horizontal. It's it's if it drops off precipitously, you still have you still have to come back 75. Yeah. You mean a variance? Yeah. Yeah. I asked I asked him about that. What do they What do they he say? He said, Yeah. He said. Uh, has to be approved. It can be approved, but <laughs> yeah. But then anybody can uh, oh can take you to arbitration. You know, arbitration. Sure. Sure. And, and they can do it over and over and over. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 if because you really had a pull to be within seventy-five feet, you'd probably do that. But I don't know that we do. I don't, I don't know what we Well, do. and one of the other questions, too, is what we're I'm talking sure about we possible go above, park the lower level, two DEP how itself. that's going to affect that. If it's just the building setback, or if we do, if you do any sort of groundwork, anything that's disturbed, you have to be 75 feet. Um, right. So th that was one of the questions I had, too, looking at that. Because in both locations, where you're somewhat close to the water, I mean, that's... When you think about it, 100 feet's not really that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on what we looked at, I mean, you know, kind of, okay, that, that looks like it would probably be 100 feet up in that. Yeah, you know, but as you come around the front, I mean, there is an existing road there or like it was some, at least an area there. But, um, you know, if you disturb that at all, if that becomes, um, you know, an issue. So, uh, you know, those are all questions that will, will probably need to be answered. Mm -hmm. but. Because when it was down there, we was down by the water, we were actually probably close to 150 feet back. You mean up on that knoll? Where you could get right into that knoll really nice. Um, In the, on the point location? Yeah, we were, for, we were back further than mm -hmm. 100. Mm -hmm. But as far as the variance goes, we have local control, so locally we can look into doing that ourselves, but we don't have to. Mm -hmm. we, can go to the, we can go to the higher level and have them do the variance. It's not, and then you don't have to worry about the, the um, right. But that's the, if we need to, that's the direction that I would. Right. The other thing that we need to do, um, Nick, is there any way that you can also sketch out the parking on either side of these so that, because that may move the, I mean, I, I know that these are very arbitrary. Right. You know, but you still need to, it's still be good to get parking. an idea. Right. Yeah. You know, and on this one, the building would, if we were to do it here, because it does slope down, but much closer to the river. This it would be hard to do the daylight basement, right? It's pretty yeah. flat. Yeah. Unless you unless you basically built Excellent. up the grid on the high side, right. you know, mm. or I don't know, you're not going to want to dig on the low side, but yeah, that's what that was my thought there when I was looking at that because. 
I mean, I can go on to Google Earth and I'll run my mouse over and it will show you every elevation by foot. And coming back here, I maybe pull four feet of elevation. And obviously we're only talking about 28 foot span. So it's like, you know, trying to locate it in that area. You get the most dramatic slope. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, the idea there is if you can't get it, I mean, you'd have you have to create it. Yeah, build it up on the backside. So, so this and uh, so this really isn't that doesn't I mean cost wise it may it'll be cheaper because you're not building I mean you're only building you know as far as like site work I mean yeah you're gonna build that up a little bit but as far as how far in as far as building roads or anything like that I mean that's gonna be a I mean if, even if you look at it as a one for one it's the same building here as there then your your site costs become come into play. Mm. Um, the other thing is we're looking at this grant money mm. for development around a, a park uh, theme with, at water access and we, there's, there's quite a lot of money available but supposedly there's a there's a swap component anything we use for municipal offices we have to give back somewhere else or if we, we if don't we, qualify for the right, money right um, pulling out of this what is now an undeveloped kind of wildlife area and turn that into a municipal office might be a little bit more difficult to swap than mm. pulling right off the side of 23, mm. which is already, some of it's already parking lot. Yeah, yeah, right, right. true. Uh, so I, I suspect there's enough area down there that hasn't been touched at all that if we take off the side of 23 and say, okay, we, we took an eighth of an acre, we can find an eighth of an acre and say, swap it out. We'll donate that to this project, which we want to do anyway. Right. Um, but you start pulling from that to build roads and municipal offices in there, it could be tough to qualify for grant money. Right, right. You're going to have to be swapping out a yep. little more. Even your road is. Right. Because then the other question is. I'm not worried about the road because that's already going to be part of your bolt list. Well, part of the, but if you if use that to access parking, your new you municipal do. office, you're not going to build a parking lot for 100 people. It doesn't matter where you put it. <laughs> I mean, you're not. <laughs> right. You're going to make the building big enough for 100 people, but you're not going to let them park. Oh, because five people You don't have 100 people park. here. Right. Right. Yeah, they park down the road. It doesn't matter where. Right. Even yeah, yeah, any town park. office is like that. When it's time for a town meeting, they're parking down the You know, it's right. no different now when you figure how how was uh, when they have one of those super events down there for sports. I mean, right. There's right. over 100 cars right in the street saying anything right. about what's in the parking lot and up through and up back. And the thing is, it, you're not allowed to be incremental anymore. Now we can do the town office and then work on the rest of this project, rerouting the road, reshaping the parks, the ball fields. If we're going to build the town office in the back, we got to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I just see it's financially, you're just creating a huge hurdle for yourself. But. You just add a lot of cost. The other question, just based on your experience, is, and I'm just throwing this out there, is if there's no grade here, okay, it's pretty flat, the question is if building a one story building, and it's a bigger building, a bigger footprint, but one story. It's going to be cheaper to build out than up. Out than up. Right. Because so we could build the same number of square feet on a slab. What? It's gonna look less like money. a mobile home sitting there. Well, well if you're if you're talking like <laughs> earthwork work and foundation wall. work, um, that tends to increase the cost. Like um, I tell people, like when you're when you're dealing with, and again, this is residential, but like a ranch versus a colonial. Okay, that second floor, the cost of materials per square foot on a colonial is more effective than a ranch. Because, like, when you're talking about using daylight basements, that's already space that you've, you've dedicated to a basement. So if you finish it, now you've, it's cheaper materials-wise to do it that way. So, like, if you did a slab that was, you know, twice as big as what we've got drawn here, right. I don't think you'll find any cost savings in that. Right. I mean, I think it's because of the fact that you really, even if you put a slab down, you're going to want five-foot frost walls under, mm -hmm. underneath it. And, you know, they'll say, okay, we'll do a haunch slab. But a lot of times with that, you end up using just as much concrete and labor right. as if you... you do know, a proper, proper, proper. Right. Proper. right. And you want it to last. So, right. you, I mean, generally speaking, you're looking at putting a footing under it. It's got to go four feet. Oh, look, there's half the foundation right there. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Plus, you're using up more acreage. True. Your footprint True. comes double. True. Right. 
You're going to look like a giant mobile home. <laughs> that arena. Well, you are. I mean, you're going to be... Well, you could make it more stylish than that. <laughs> not a lot. You're 30 by 60. You're going to go 30 by 120. No, I know. I know. I was just asking the question. Because if you have to do a lot of land redevelopment or I don't reshaping. think the daylight basement's going to work and do it out front. No, it, it's not going to. We don't have the gray. We just don't... Well, you can't build up the front? I mean, you only need you, to build it up. You could, could. Eight feet. You're going to look like a building standing in the air with a bunch of dirt thrown around it. Yeah, well, then, generally speaking, when you're looking at a house, you're looking at at least 18 inches of exposed concrete all day. So that means that the basement's only gone in, whatever, six, seven and a half feet with the footing. Um, so let's just say, for our argument's sake, we found four feet there and you build it up another. You got three feet. You know, maybe if you put a, a deck on the front or something and, you know, dressed up that concrete, it wouldn't look that bad. But again, that really comes down to. You know, to me, that'd be a little bit more simple than throwing a bunch of dirt in there. Mm. So, 23 is level. But there's no contour from as you leave the highway and you're moving towards the gazebo. There's no drop. Because it, it looks to me like there is. Well, th there is, but I think we determined that when we kind of walked through the, the woods. We there. did walk there, through yeah, there. And there's, there is some, you there is some drop there, but it, it might be three or four feet. As opposed to that location out farther towards the yeah, water, you've got lots then, then you've definitely got, you know, something usable. Oh, there. yeah. I mean, that's natural out there. But I'm just, I think there's a big boulder that as you're going towards the gazebo. Seems like there's quite a valley there that of, that's low, but I just visually, I, I've never. Well, and, and it's hard to tell, too, with all the trees. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there, there is a slope there for sure. But, but, right. But the daylight basement would be on the backside. Correct. I'm, I, I thought that, you know, 23 was here and the gazebo was below it. Oh, so you're looking at it that way. Yeah, and you well, that's a, if it's, if it's yeah. only a foot, then it doesn't, it's pretty hard so to do a daylight basement. You're, Mike, you're, you're orienting back, this you face right. to 23, Mike. But I think you're going to be within that set. I think, you go, I think if you try to do it closer than 75 feet, you can get it. Because you walk through that woods, there's one spot in there that dips pretty good. That right in behind that willow before you get to the water, it drops right off. <laughs> Doesn't the road really dictate though? I mean, well, I think the idea was when we when I looked at that, it was like, okay, well, you've pretty much already got access from the high side, so you're only creating access from the low side. Yeah. Um, but, Did, but my, he's right. You, yeah, he is thinking of it differently because I, I noticed when he said it, the southern exposure. You're envisioning it. Correct. Turn right, and I don't mind that, in fact, it would be great. You want water to run back towards 23 from the front of your building. So we've, we, maybe we do raise that. So we, uh, your, your asphalt ramp for handicap access, maybe you're three feet above the road when you're all landscaped. And then you drive down and around back, and that's maybe eight to ten feet below the road. So a total of 15 feet in so, there. So where like are that. you seeing the parking? In front of, like 23, then parking, then building? Well, I, I, I'm imagining parking at one tier where you pull right in, you know, at the end of your building. Right. And then you have a retaining wall to accommodate this daylight basement. And that parking goes around the backside of the retaining wall. That's, uh, it's, it wasn't my, this is exactly what Litchfield did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I that's where you, I wouldn't mess like what he's talking about. I wouldn't worry about a parking lot back there. You got people now parking all the way downtown and they're walking up. In well, the you got your whole basketball court on the other side. That but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. going to park everywhere, and you just need to make a nice walking to get there. Yeah, well, and you need. I mean, you don't want it a mile away, but but it's right. that's not. But you need to on on a selectman's night. You be able to. You got to have five or six cars can pull in there. I mean, which is not hard to do. I mean, it's it's Correct, all there. But that's, Talking about five or six cars isn't... No, it's not a hundred. But we've got plenty of parking already over there. I mean, I say they'll fill that place up for a ball game. Correct. I think it'd be interesting to really be able to find... A spot in the there? A spot on the lot that works. And then figure out your configuration of this is this is what well, your options are. Well, then we need really to hike it. I we just need, need a transom, really. I, 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 I just wonder, you know, from the shoulder of the road... How much, how much room do right. I have as you I head through that, the gazebo? Well, you do have that taper coming off the road anyway. I think what, that was the thought, though, is that the, the land slopes away as you're looking back towards the river. So the idea was to put it long ways in there um, as opposed to putting it broadside of 23. But, I mean, 
when that when it comes out of Colton Stream, it kind of comes up and it levels off, and then it comes up again, and that's where that willow is. <laughs> so, sir, right in that, there's a spot in there where you could do a daylight basin. Pretty sure. With the daylight basin and facing, facing Colton Stream, the stream. Or I think you could do similar to what Mike's talking about, because. In that back corner where the remember in the back part of that gazebo where there's mm -hmm. a rock on in past that there's mm -hmm. the rock that they pushed off. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why they did that because it went downhill. There was a hole right there. They filled it. So yeah, I think if you could look at the contours that you have, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. you could do something. But I think you may be in a Liberian situation or because when we're talking about plowing, I mean plowing all the way from here to there. That's that's. That's, you know. They're already doing it. All the way back to the boat landing? Well, they, 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 the we close that road, though, every spring when it gets muddy. I mean, we'd have to do some serious road improvement. It's muddy. No, I'm, I'm saying, but, but we now we'd have to leave it open all year if you're back there. That has nothing to do with plowing, though. We plow it all winter. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. All the way back yeah, there. You, you can use your, you can launch your snowmobiles down there. Yeah. I didn't know that. Have to, because <laughs> but it's a, not a very good road. I mean, no, that's the problem. Is it's okay. if we right. build a road to go in there, then it's yeah. going to be a road. Yeah. It's you are not going to have to worry about. Correct. That. Right. So, but anyway. we don't want to build a road there. We want to build a road around the outside. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that's which yeah, is a just, big project. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anyway. So you know, that needs to be investigated a little bit more. Yeah. Um, well, I think my my thought, and this is just me personally, is if you put it here. You're gonna to have to put something else to go there. You're gonna to have to figure out something as a really kind of as a sell point in terms of what it's gonna to cost to put it here. Um, what that might be, I don't know. But I mean, a picking thing area, you know, that's probably not gonna be enough. But but I think you find that the cost to develop as far as going farther in is you're gonna to have to justify it somehow. To yeah. me, if going deep is what you would do for your personal. Right. I'm going there because it's a beautiful piece of property. I like the elevation. I like the view. I'm willing to spend the extra to run electricity yeah, yeah. underground right, and build right. a road. But are you going to do that? Are all those uh, valid reasons for your municipal office? And I, I, I would question it. Right. I mean, mo most municipal offices are right off a road. Right. You're efficient. <laughs> you don't build a road just for aesthetic right. purposes right. or the view. Most towns don't own what we own. Right. We're still going to get to keep it, and it will be utilized, mm -hmm. but it maybe it isn't I, I a would, building. Until we find out more on the grant money, I would not turn it down. Turn what down? The father putting the town office back there. Seems like but that's the initial good. thought when, I, when you show me the property, too. Like, you know, we're going to put a road in there. And oh, I know. And yeah, like, no, you're going to have a lot of expense. You but, spend a hundred and something thousand dollars to put a soccer field in it, it didn't cost anything. We didn't spend a dime. I know we didn't. That's what I But just no said. one's going to donate a road to us. I mean, not between now and next June. Yeah. Well. And then you, you, you've done, have you done some underground power at your place? Oh, yeah, all underground. Yeah, it's not cheap. No. Well, we did it ourselves. Oh, okay. But would later. you do ours? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. No. That is labor intensive. Now, how far did you come in? Well, we brought 22 poles in, but then, but we have power all the way out to our camp, which is out, all the way out on the point, comes all the way back to the house. I don't know how far that is. That's what is it a pole? Long. What is it a pole? You yeah, that's correct. I don't know. I it think it's costs? like 100 feet, isn't it? Like no, how between? much money Cost? per pole? Yeah. I don't know. We <laughs> did it privately. A friend of ours did it with us. There are plenty Too of people much. who know the answer to that. I know yeah, Rick knows it. I mean, yeah. he can tell you the number right off the map. But anyway, anyway. I had a piece of property in Litchfield that was beautiful. It was a big ridge overlooking a, a, a peat bog. It was gorgeous. But my driveway was going to be approaching a half a mile. And it was going to be a $100,000 driveway. Mm -hmm. and, and at least the 50 for power. So. Yeah. In fact, it was so prohibited for power, I was researching, trying to live so off the grid. Oh, forget that. And, and that That's was 15 mistake. years ago. And, <laughs> I mean, probably more doable now, but it was not okay. realistic. Because we were talking about doing that. Yeah. Well, when you think about what it's going to take to, to, like, when you figure out what the size of a generator is to run a house, and you, you think of solar, I mean, 
my boss, when I when I worked for that construction company, built you know stuff on the coast. He built his own camp um, off the Bryant Road there, and well, I guess it's by the time you get there, it's almost Heartland. But um, he did like a dual system. He actually had two big diesel generators, and he had solar. So when the solar yeah. wasn't enough, he, those generators would kick in. But mm. it's really tough. I mean, you you'd really have to change your lifestyle in order to do a solely. Solar you have to be flexible. Or power or you something. are weather dependent. Yeah. Uh, it's getting better though. It is. So. But still. I read the I read the oh. the capacity that California would need would take the entire state of Arizona covered in panels. <laughs> well, that's California for you. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> we got to the US the other day when we got that stove and there's a big solar array going in. Oh yeah, huge. Colby has one too, don't they? Yeah, you see that from yep. the other state. From the internet. And uh, Chimbro has one for theirs. Yeah, it's it's a scam. It it's well. And it's all is. underwritten by ratepayers because it's that special energy that you can sell to but Massachusetts I mean, and places that have to buy that special. So energy. then you're taking up all of this land for these solar panels, which have all sorts of Carcinogens and all that. Well, they don't have that long a life. I think they only last about twenty years. So, where is the what? It's kind of like a heat pump. Everybody's in them. They think they're great. They throw away. There's no repairs to them. I mean, you talk to anybody that's out of residential, and they're highly don't recommend them for for commercial. I have a client who owns. 10,000 acres in Washington County, and he's a blueberry guy, he's a logger, and one of the things he does is uh, he builds roads for the windmills over there, and he maintains them in the winter. And uh, he said, I, I don't get involved in the politics of the wind, <laughs> but I will tell you that I spend a million dollars in diesel every winter keeping these roads open. Oh, so they can get in here. <laughs> so, I mean, it's ridiculous. He's fine. I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. It's it just, works for him. Yep. But that's all, all that goes into every kilowatt that's generated. Right. Right. Exactly. And then they got these, uh, the bird ladies, the people up there that with clipboards counting any dead birds. <laughs> it's, and it's, it's very official. Oh, it's, I know. Because those windmills yeah. are killing all sorts of migrations of birds, right? Well, they got to figure it out somehow. I mean, they, they took nuclear off the table, so. Well, you can't have hydro. The simplest, cleanest thing there ever was, and that's gone, so. Because well, you did have to dam up a river, though. That the fish the have to migrate. <laughs> but, I mean, a natural gas turbine is pretty darn clean, and we happen to have more natural gas than we could burn in the next 50 years. So, But anyway, we'll, so uh, have, are we at a point where we can adjourn? Uh, adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. And thank you very much for coming. Uh, we well, are adjourned, and it's uh, 2.35.